told you I found you a perfect match Chosen by science, but you had to marry them right this second You would tell me, well that sounds pretty whack And I would add you having weeks to know if you really love them You just got married at first sight Jason and Asia gonna tell you wrong from right Are all these couples just disasters? Hello and welcome to A Perfect Match. I'm Asia and I am here to talk about some Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 17. And I'm here with my amazing co-host, someone who I, I know is just so, 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 so excited to bring a certain impression to this podcast um, it's like it's as if it was served to him on a delicious platter. I said, "Here you go, Jason. Here is exactly what you want. I know you want to talk about me this week, so here you go, Jason Reed. Jason, how are you? Asia, as if as if I wasn't feeling enough pressure from all of our Facebook members who, as the episode was going on, was like, "Oh, can't wait to hear what Jason's got cooking this week." You just added more onto the pile. Uh, I appreciate. What if I just didn't do it? What if I just like you know what? You're all expecting it. If I just didn't do it. What if I just? What if I just? What if I just presented it totally normal, totally straight? Like just just said what happened, and did not do my creepy pastor cow impression. How would you all react? You just start seeing people one by one leave the Facebook group. Ooh, ooh, I've had ooh, enough. Ooh, I've had enough. I'm done. Uh, yeah, it's, it's as if Pastor Cow. No, watches the podcast, knows the podcast, and it's like, you know what? I'm just give Jason more material. Just, here you go. Here you go. Take it. Take it. Just, just I would do exactly what you say I do. Here you go. Well, hey, stay here tuned we- to see what happens. I may do it. I might not. I don't know. I might be feeling crazy today. I don't know. Who knows? Oh, uh, but stay tuned, Asia. Okay. Uh, as we were touring the house of a uh, Denver Broncos great which we'll talk about when we get to it. How are you feeling? We're just like, <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> I'm so impressed <laughs> by this shack of a house. It was, it was a huge, it, it, I don't Eight even bedrooms. Like you, That's nothing. <laughs> nothing. I don't even feel like you call it a house. It's a compound. Like it was huge. That's a wing of my compound. <laughs> of my mansion. <laughs> It came up. I said, "That's it." No. <laughs> I just feel like if they were in in uh in Houston, they would be like just walk into a room, and we just see we just see Asia like Asia on the on the wall. We see pepper and cinnamon. Like, oh, I wonder whose house they're in. <laughs> <laughs> they scurry off. Yeah. <laughs> like, whose house is this? Why is there oh so gosh. much Spice Girl? <laughs> memorabilia everywhere this person really loves dogs <laughs> to an <laughs> alarming amount <laughs> like maybe a little too much there's like a thousand dog toys in the living room <laughs> what is that oh, just open a closet and just dog outfits and costumes <laughs> just come raining down <laughs> listen y'all i was telling jason before the podcast oh my gosh. seriously i literally was just informing my friend mm. of what's going on i said Hey, Jason, I was like, yeah, tomorrow, you were talking about the dogs. I said, tomorrow, yeah, they're going to get their Valentine's Day pictures. <laughs> this man busts out laughing. <laughs> it's like, Valentine's Day pictures. Yes. And then, and then tell them what you told me after that. What, what, <laughs> what were the pictures before this? Earlier this week, they got their Mardi Gras pictures done. <laughs> Mardi Gras pictures. Why? <laughs> Who needs or what? Who is doing this? It's uh, as I told Asia, just just a ploy to justify this uh, doggy daycare and shake the girls to just to, to justify the thousands and millions of dollars they charge you a, a month, a year, or whatever to take care of these dogs. What can we do to raise the prices? I they know. Got me. Let's just randomly do these pictures. They're going to cost us, you know, two dollars a picture, and then charge them fifteen bucks a pic. To do. Listen. They're gonna be cute. They already gave me a preview. Um, so when those when I get those pictures, when I get the Mardi Gras picture, I get the Valentine's Day picture next week. I will show you. 
What's next? Uh, where's the Where are the President's Day pictures? Where are the Flag Day pictures? Where are the Arbor Day pictures? <laughs> I think after I think after Valentine's Day is St. Patrick's Day pictures. Makes total sense. I can see. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! So yes, they um look, they're my babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh man. Uh, but anywho, make sure y'all go subscribe to the Love at First Sight feed. That's where you can get all of our podcasts, as well as other shows, such as the show a perfect or the show Perfect Match, the Ultimatum, and then Love is Blind, which premieres next week on Valentine's Day. Week. Yes. The perfect love show for the perfect day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> To show you exactly what you don't want in your relationship. <laughs> exactly. So some exciting news for, as y'all know, we, this, the love is blind coverage is on this feed. So for this next season, season six, Five, six, <laughs> season six. Yes. Yeah, season six. There will be, a new co-host this season. Wow. Okay. Roll, please. Jason Reed. Jason. Oh, <laughs> it's me. It's a me. Oh my gosh. Asia. It's me, Jason. I'm so I'm so pumped. So happy to be joining you on the Love is Blind podcast this season. Uh, where you said, Hey, you want to come on the podcast for, for all the episodes? Like, oh. I would love to to podcast I was blind with you. I was so so happy. Yeah, about that. <laughs> You're okay. gonna be replacing me this season. Excuse me. Uh yeah. So I, <laughs> I'm what? Uh, uh, that is not what I agreed to. <laughs> right. We're gonna have to go back over the contracts. But seriously, seriously, y'all. Jason is replacing me. He will be podcasting with Mary this season on Love is Blind. Work is just insane right now. So I I only got time for one baby <laughs> right now. And that's well, right three. Here. Three technically. <laughs> yes. Mary at first sight. Pepper. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon. That's mm -hmm. just the way it goes. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm a, <laughs> I know it's, I know it's not the 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 dream team, right? Me and you. <laughs> That the people watching this show, this particular podcast, probably were envisioning. But I think me and Mary are going to be able to chop it up. It's like a new, like, uh, you have the dream team. Then you have, like, the team that have, like, the big three. Y'all are yeah. the big two. Yeah, we can do this. Me and Mary are going to have fun. Love is Blind is always uh, fodder for ridiculousness and uh, and hilarity. So I, I'm going to have a blast. Uh, and, yeah, I, we'll yeah. miss you, of course. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll figure out a way to, to, to carry on. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all got it. I have full trust in y'all. Um, but yeah, the, 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 these are the times when people remember that podcasting ain't our full thing. No, <laughs> you know? not at all. As much as that would be amazing. Uh, and I can't wait so for many the hours ones, in the day. I can't wait for the one star reviews. I miss <laughs> Asia. Where is Asia? <laughs> you got it. If, if, if anything, people are going to think it's funnier. This show really tanked when they let that dude on all the time. <laughs> What's that man thing so much, talking about? So much bro energy. <laughs> there are men on Love is Blind. We need, we need more of a feminine uh, touch to this podcast. <laughs> so the, all, the, all the reviews why, you say? Why do you have to say? Why does feminine have to be you know conscribed to a female? Okay. You're on the right podcast for that. That's right. Here Perfect episode. <laughs> so... Like I said, subscribe to the Love at First Sight feed. You, that's where you'll get all the Love is Blind coverage for season six. I can't wait to listen. <laughs> um, but make sure y'all leave us a five-star rating review for this podcast. We have a couple that we want to shout out. So we have one from Ruthie B 12 It's called uh, titled Love You All. Your podcast makes me look forward to the weekend. You are the best. Thank you. Oh, short short and, sweet. and sweet. Love it. And then one's from Maps Hole. <laughs> the subject is ha ha ha, he 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 he. Great podcast. Jason is hilarious. Love Asia's laugh. You know, there, that's a consistent thing I'm hearing. 
<laughs> What's that? That I'm hilarious? <laughs> Am I funny at all? <laughs> Asia, yes, you are very, very funny. I am just funnier. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just they, like... Yeah, and they don't want to say that. They don't want to say like, oh, Jason's so hilarious. Asia's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Jason is laugh out loud hilarious. Asia, your your laugh's cool. I chuckle. I may smile I at the things that you say. <laughs> you got a good laugh. <laughs> I may blow air out of my nose. <laughs> Have you ever heard what? that? <laughs> what? <laughs> because people always say like, they'll be like, LMAO. But then it's like, in reality, you were just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, I punctuate every sentence I say to people in LOL. It's a bad habit and I'm trying to kick it. Mm-hmm. How many times am I actually laughing out loud? Very, very, very little. Like <laughs> extremely little. Like not a not that much at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not typing it and then going. <laughs> 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 Almost never. <You're> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> like I I I I say it before the LOL, and then I laugh and like I'm gonna add that in LOL. <laughs> I I laughed out loud. I never do that. It's a bad habit. I'm trying to kick. Um, when, whenever I, you, you can ask Asia. Whenever I correspond with anyone, I always, for some reason, have to add LOL at the end. I don't know why. It's, 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 it's almost all, like a courtesy. It's I, I just can't leave a sentence just well enough alone. I have to add a punctuation, which is which instead of like an exclamation mark is an LOL. Now I don't understand. Because we're in the day and age that if you don't, it almost feels like I'm talking Whoa, sternly. Are you mad? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yes, what are, what are the next two reviews? Um, next two reviews, we're going to do one from Credit Genius. Uh, best maths recaps. I stumbled into this feed as I follow many RHAB channels and decide to check out Married at First Sight. The recaps are well done, and I feel I'm being heard on my thoughts and opinions each episode. LOL. <laughs> Jason keeps me laughing, and Asia brings an awesome perspective that gives a nice dynamic to the shows. I do also listen to the other reality recaps that have been added as well. Keep up the great content. See, you give a nice perspective. I'm hilarious. You give a nice perspective. See? That's not bad. Asia says things sometimes. She says smart stuff. <laughs> that Jason guy's funny. Asia says smart stuff. That's our dynamic. You can't deny that. Uh, That's what works. Except uh, for the moment that I, I said respite instead of oh, respite. Yeah. <laughs> Someone got after you about that one. Yeah. Uh, it's respite, okay. <laughs> I mean, I was gonna do it in the moment, but I was like, no, let me. Let me. I, mm. I gave her too much crap about Phil. I fail, so let me not talk about respite. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! And she did it. She did it. Po- she did pre-show. The pre-show. She did fail again. And what? Yeah, because what was I talking? I don't even know what I was talking about. I but you're talking about. Yeah. Fail. <laughs> Uh, the other review I want to do is from Cameron Eleven. Uh, it's entitled "Love the Hosts." I really enjoy this podcast. You guys are hilarious. You guys, she included you. Okay. Okay. If you are not watching the show on YouTube, you are truly missing out because watching their faces as they are commenting is half the fun. When Age was doing her Harry Potter impression, Jason's face had me dying laughing. Even my faces are funny. Asia. Wow. <laughs> uh, you around. guys, <laughs> yeah, you guys rock. Thank you so much, Cameron. I appreciate that you find me hilariously funny. And Asia's uh, impressions are good <laughs> of Harry Potter. That's all. That's all I got. I'm not a yeah. People impressions. That's tough. But you're like that's easy. <laughs> that's nothing. Um, also, before we get into this episode, we are here to talk about an episode. Before we get into yeah. this episode, make sure you go join the Facebook group. You can find us at a Perfect Match Podcast on Facebook. This week, the password is maximalist. That that was an Asia original, y'all. <laughs> Maximalist. It's not good. Don't call me out. <laughs> I, listen, I had a long day, and I could just not. I could not get one in, in the brain. And Asia's like, "How about Maximalist?" I was like, "Okay, sure." He said, "Lame." <laughs> <laughs> Only in my head. I didn't say it out loud. You said "lose." <laughs> As if get the picture. Duh. Okay. You, oh, was that before your time? I did not understand that reference. <laughs> okay. 
I can't. Even, I can't remember the whole thing, so I won't. Yeah, let's I won't not, go let's there. not do a whole uh, youth. Uh, you know, schools the older person. Uh, you just here. swear. You know what? Just there's only a couple year difference. <laughs> there's like almost a seven. decade, but okay. No, like seven. Yeah, somewhere in there. <laughs> almost a decade. Okay, almost. You're rounding yeah. heavily. Depends. Um. <laughs> so, this was the retreat episode, and yes. so. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're here to talk about Mary First Sight. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> this is just variety hour. <laughs> <laughs> we're just here to update you on our lives, y'all. <laughs> right. Today I had Chipotle for lunch. <laughs> oh, oh, this is yes. This uh wait, I said episode 17, huh? You it's did episode 16. I, I was like, I could have swore this is episode 16, but I didn't want to be wrong, so I didn't correct mm. you. This is episode 16. Episode <laughs> well, 16. Season 17, episode 16. It'll be labeled correctly so people won't be confused where they are. If people keep track of the episode numbers, <laughs> I don't feel like if I, if I, I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> covering it, I wouldn't be. I wasn't confident in the number because <laughs> so I didn't correct you. You're so like, <laughs> I was like, mm, I guess it's 17. I don't know. I got 16 on my notes, but I guess it's 17. I right. um, but listen, the episode wasn't bad. I, I mm-hmm. kind of enjoyed the episode. You know, it wasn't as a snooze fest like I felt yeah. like last week was. I thought there was some good stuff here. Uh, not a terrible episode. I think for mainly for me, I was just waiting around to get get to Abbott Elementary. So. Oh, I thought you were saying waiting around to get to uh, Emily's accident. No. <laughs> Boy. I also didn't realize that this was going to be a two-parter. I didn't think that we were going to spend a whole episode of Michael and Chloe not with the group. So that was well, interesting. Well, they've been doing that for the past couple seasons where the retreat is kind of like a two-episode experience. Mm-hmm. I like felt we complained like... about it. We complained about it last season because it was <laughs> definitely boring. Yes. I guess this time was needed because we did need this context with Chloe and Michael mm-hmm. before they joined the group. So we're going to talk about the retreat first. Then we're going to go into Michael and Chloe. Um, so if you, so just so you understand, with the retreat, we're just going to talk about it chronologically. <laughs> if you care. I, I think they understood the first time. <laughs> so it's 15 days until decision day. And they're getting ready to go on the retreat. So we get back in Austin. Is it just me? Or... Is there just awkward tension now generally with these two? With Becca and Austin? Um, I'm trying to think if I if I felt it right here in the beginning. I don't think I felt it in the beginning. I definitely felt it when they got back from their little trip last time and mm. Austin was doing his spiel again about how, you know, oh, just it's going to take time. And Becca was just like, oh, so annoyed. But I don't know if I felt it immediately right here in this episode. Gotcha. And for, for some reason, I felt it in this scene. So they're just packing up, getting ready to go. Um, Austin's like, I got my speaker. She's like, I got my speaker too. So we'll both have speakers. It's, a, it's probably a big house. So we'll both need them. And then she's like, what are you hoping to get out of this weekend at the couple's retreat? <laughs> Austin, what are you hoping to get out of this weekend at the couple's retreat? Um, he's like, well, we'll be in our big far away bed and we can do things like the things that Dr. Pia talked about, like making out and other things. Becca gets immediately excited. She's he's, like, uh, okay. <laughs> She's like, that makes me really excited. Wow. Okay. Also is like, we're gonna do it. And by it, you know what I mean. We're He's almost guaranteeing right now. They're like, that thing you want to do, we're going to do it. Like, get ready to get your socks knocked off. It's gonna. I'm going to be, I'm I'm in it. I'm in there like swimwear. We're doing the thing. I was like, okay, Austin, uh, the big talk, big talk, big talk. Calling a shot right now. Yeah. And I, and I didn't believe him in this moment. She no. shouldn't have either. <laughs> no. He t- the way he was talking was just like, yeah, we're going we're, we're gonna to do that stuff. Like, come on, Austin. Come on. It's just like. Because this isn't the first time. I mean, we even had the time in the bed where, you know, he did all the roses and stuff. Like, in her mind, this is a buildup to it uh, about to happen. Then the joking about the him joking about, oh, we should just go do it out on the balcony. It's like, why is he do like this is you're teasing her. Why are you talking so big? Like, <laughs> if you have no plans on He's like, it's a joke. <laughs> I mean, maybe in the moment he is like. So try he's maybe trying to psych himself up. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna 
really gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna get it done. We're gonna we're gonna do the things. And my thing is, Austin is so he's such a like, like scaredy cat about sex in just their apartment. What <laughs> makes him think he's gonna be okay with you know six other people around? <laughs> I mean, I know that they are in a far away bedroom, but like. Why could you not do it in your apartment with the two of you, but now you can do it in this house with six other people? I, I don't understand. I just and it's so it's he has no awareness to what this type of talk is doing for her. This is something she seriously wants. This is something she does seriously think is an issue in their relationship. And he's like, when he's joking like this, this is serious to her. Like, okay. I she she legitimately got excited. She's like, okay, it is going to happen. I, I don't think he's joking in this moment. I think in this moment he is being for real. I think he's planning on, you know, doing the the thing, doing the deed later that night. Now, should you know that you're going to this house and you're gonna party with your friends and maybe <laughs> You're going to get a little too overserved, and things may or may not happen that way. Maybe you should anticipate that. So maybe you just, just don't make these big proclamations, big promises. How about you just don't do that? Let it happen naturally. Let it. Yeah. And, what is, what's the saying? Uh, under promise, over deliver. There you go. <laughs> and it's like, you all talk about this so much. The buildup is just so crazy. Between him talking about these things where he feels like he has to talk about them because it's such a big issue, and Becca... It's just, I understand your sex positive, but every other sentence out of her mouth is something about the sex. <laughs> so I'm just like, it's a big problem for her. It is, but just she's talking about it constantly, constantly, constantly. I'm just like, okay, and of get course, it. you know, we're seeing 10% of the words yeah. that she's saying to him. So, of right. course, that's what they're highlighting because they're like, this is their issue because they're not talking about religion anymore. So, we know yeah, where the issue, li issue lies. Every other sentence we see out of Becca's mouth is like, I'm hoping to get lucky tonight. Yeah, we're going to do it. Like, oh, okay, we get it. You want you want to do it. We understand. <laughs> well, uh, on a completely opposite note, we cut over to Cameron and Claire. I was like, why have they not retired the we, graphic of Cameron and Claire? We cut to Claire. <laughs> I was like, Cameron probably is like, oh, why am I on episode 16? How many episodes has it been since we've actually seen Cameron in the flesh? I have to a couple three? we I think before the wedding we saw him in the car. Yeah, about to go have surgery. Self we haven't yeah. seen him since then. Man, how how is it's been at least five episodes since we saw Cameron being shot by anyone other than himself? Like mm -hmm. a, a legit, you know, on on set with the other people. And he's just like a ghost that, well, well maybe I shouldn't say that because it's just hard condition, but he's like, he's like haunting the, the, the show. And we speak about him so much. We just don't see him anymore at all. Mm -hmm. So we get this, uh, re Claire recording herself. She's like, I'm heading to the couple's retreat. It does feel sad and strange. And I am really bummed that Cameron can't be there, but I am going to go. Oh. So put upon. So bad for Claire. Oh she gosh. has to go to this retreat. Oh, she has to go to the big mansion in the in the mountains. Oh, because if she didn't go to the retreat, she'd just be stuck in the apartment. In the apartment, that she's some some way somehow still occupying. <laughs> you say, y'all, I lost the key somehow. When I find it, I'll let you know and I'll move out. Claire's like, listen, I was planning on being here for two months. I sublet in my apartment, so yeah. She's like, I literally don't have somewhere to go. <laughs> I have nowhere to go, so this is my apartment for the next two months. Because when she told Lauren later, what was I going to do? Just stay at the apartment? What, You're what still in the you apartment? Have, <laughs> what would you have done pre-married at first sight if it was a regular schmegular weekend? <laughs> what, I'm sorry, you didn't have plans before, Claire. No, not at all. Uh, so. Then we cut to Emily and Brennan. They are packing up in their apartment. Um, she realizes she has overpacked. She has a lot of stuff. Uh, when we get a confessional, she says, I feel very blah about him. You know, I'm looking forward to this weekend because we're all be tra trapped together. We get one last hurrah before decision day. And she's like, I really hope he realizes that there's been no effort on his end. Uh, he realizes he don't care. Okay. He does not care. And she was like, one last hurrah before decision day. 
it was still two weeks before decision day. Remember when? Remember when these people used to get together? Like it seemed like they would get together every single freaking day, and we see yeah, because they're living one, in the same place. Yeah, we see at least one group outing every episode. Now we complained about it back then, because um, we we're like, why do they keep going out together every freaking episode? But well, one last get together that that seems like you know, I, I feel like in other seasons we we we're probably due for another two dinners, <laughs> two, right? Two, of, of all them together before decision day. I know, and I'm like, I feel like the girls always hang out. It does have, yeah. that's just how it feels. Yeah, for sure. It feels so, like Austin, Austin and Brendan always hang out. Right. Yeah. So we get the car rides to the retreat. They're going to this house. And so when we're in Austin and Becca's car, Austin's like, uh, he says he's really excited to see Michael and Chloe, uh, but, you know, they're not coming until later. And uh, he asked Becca, like, what are you most excited about? She said, I'm most excited to beep. And then he's like, well, what else are you excited about? <laughs> She's like, well, spending all the spending time with our people. It's all her mind all the time. She can't think about anything else. And and I feel like it will be until it like it happens. I guess I just it's 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 so much, Becca. We we understand. We, <laughs> I I think that's part of his anxiety and part of his stress about it is that she is she is so open with it, which is great in a lot of respects. But for someone that's not as open with it, for her to be talking so much about it, I think all it just builds the pressure up even more for him. Yeah, I think I just feel like they have different mindsets right now because she is very much so in the mindset of. I am attracted to this guy. This is my husband. So one plus one equals two where he's like, okay, I just married this stranger. So I'm still like, you know, I don't, I may not completely see her as my wife yet. So I'm still yeah. getting to know her. I'm still getting comfortable. I'm still trying to break down walls. So they're just on two different <laughs> ways. I, I just, I don't know. I, I think everyone's being a little too hard on Austin. I think, it's okay for him to want to move slow and like with, with the constant needling of Austin, like why aren't you guys having sex yet? Like, I just, I keep coming back to the, to the idea of what if we use, you know, switch the genders, like how would we be viewing this from well, that's, the other side? Yeah. I mean, and that's my thing. I feel like my biggest issue with Austin in this whole thing is the big talk that is just kind of like, hello. Yeah, we're going to have so much fun in our big faraway bed. And then... Uh, how, often do you do that? how often do you do that with the Spice Girls? <laughs> exactly. They're dogs. <laughs> I'm like, come here. This is one of their treats right now. Got to keep treats on hand. Oh it's gosh. a stick. The constant bribery. <laughs> treats. Exactly. <laughs> I just, I, I don't, I don't think his. Oh my gosh! You just, you just as a pile. You just, you just in a pile of dog treats. You just like you're not in a chair. You're just in a pile of dog treats. It's like I'm ready at any time to give them what they need. Right, I have to. They, they get a, uh, you know, busy. But I don't think I don't know if it's. I think in the moments he's not. It's not big talk. I think he means what he says. He just. I think when the time comes, just like. Eh, I don't know yet. I'm not sure. It's like it's like a, a kid like getting into the deep end of the pool. It's like I, I'm gonna I want to do it. I want to I want to. Today's big day. Talk. Today's the day. I'm gonna jump off the diving board. And then he gets up to the diving board. He's like, uh, no. It's like and if it you can't back, back it up, if you don't have the evidence to back it up, it is big talk. You're doing nothing but talking because you have no actions to support it. So it's big talk until you have action to like action to back it up. Which he has not has not showed, which is fine. Just don't do, just don't dangle the fruit in front of her to say this is going to happen unless you know deep down it's going to happen. But I feel like he, I feel like he feels that he has to talk this big talk, or else it will look like he's not doing anything. I think in Austin's perfect world, things would happen naturally, but they can't happen naturally because she just won't stop talking about it. Like. It's 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 like that. It's it's like a thing we talk about all the time. You know, if your wife tells you to bring your home flowers, you can't bring flowers home the next day because then they're you know they're like, oh, you just you just did that because uh, you know I I said something. You keep talking about it. It's just it builds up so much pressure. <sighs> but then if you don't bring the flowers, she's gonna think you didn't hear her. 
Oh, you don't care. Listen, I bring I bring the flowers. Okay, I brings the flowers. You said, don't get it twisted. <laughs> I'm, I'm consistently I'm bringing my business. I'm, I'm consistently bringing flowers. Okay, <laughs> the flowers get brought. Okay. <laughs> Um, so Ain't we no have awesome stuff going on around here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the flowers are being delivered. <laughs> delivered so we... and signed for. Okay. Oh I don't leave God. on the front porch. I knock on the door and they get signed for it. That, that's sweet of you. Uh, um, sh- so we hop on over to Emily and Brennan's car. Emily. Car of doom. <laughs> right. Emily goes, Orion and Chloe aren't going to be here until Sunday. (laughs) Brennan's like, don't you mean Michael? Dummy. (laughs) Funniest thing Brennan said all season. (laughs) It's almost like, you know, it's almost that we're like, idiot. (laughs) We just like, you know, you can almost imply that it's in there. And I... I literally, yeah, and I literally, I thought maybe she did mean Orion and Chloe. I was like, hmm, that's weird. They're showing up separately. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, well, why are those two coming Sunday? <laughs> um, but um, so they, she said she she starts asking like, oh, I wonder how the honeymoon's going, and she's like, oh, like, Brennan, you should have texted him to see, like, how it was. And Brennan's like, oh, I'm sure we'll find out. And then it just becomes this passive-aggressive trade-off of just like, oh, you know, you know, things things can go downhill on the honeymoon. Uh, it's just like, what are y'all saying? Well, yeah, <laughs> everything's great till your, till your wife gets drunk and starts farting a lot. Do you know that's the new theory on the block about why Brennan is so turned off? Why? Like they like the theor- the the new theory in Scuttlebutt out on the interwebs mm-hmm. is that when Emily drinks, she likes to fart a lot. And where that is, is that what- coming from? I I think I saw something that someone had put on some forum that they were they were good friends of Brennan's, and this is the real reason why he's so turned off. And this is what everybody's running with. A random person online <laughs> said they are Brennan's friend, and you believe them, and that is the reason why he's turned off because she farts oh, a lot and she makes a joke out gosh. of it when she does drink and does fart a lot. That is the that is the new it theory about Brennan. Interesting, and, and that is why he was so turned off. I think part of that is true. I do think the drinking and how she acts when she drinks is a big part of what turned him off because I feel like. Emily might be a sloppy drunk. Mm. As evidenced by the whole the uh, wedding. By the, not just the not just the wedding, but the whole uh she tore the shower curtain down uh when she I, was drunk and tried to smother me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, excuse me. Or or what's the what's the word? I'm having trouble finding the word where I just I just can't believe Brennan. Like I, there's a level of skepticism I have with his version of events. Well, well, no, listen, those versions of events are definitely uh, skewed and definitely over-exaggerated. But I do think something along the lines of that happened. I don't think she, you know, kicked down the door and was like, "Let me, let me, see, let me see your your naked body," and just like <laughs> tore down the shower curtain. But I do think there was something of like. She barged into the room drunk and he's like trying to take a shower. She's trying to talk to him. And maybe she trips and falls and tears a priest of the shower curtain. I don't know. I, mm-hmm. it, I don't know with a whole story. But I do think probably when Emily's drinking, she does get a little crazy, which I think may or may not have turned him off. Mm-hmm. Well, we got a confessional from him uh, while they were in the car. And he's like, yeah, I think me and Emily are on the same page with what we're going to get out of the couple's retreat. You just talking to talk, huh? Just being friends. <laughs> You're right. We're coming out of this with a good. Mm, we might be acquaintances, but <laughs> yeah, we're gonna come out of this n- knowing each other <laughs> and not right. totally hating each other. Awesome. That's what we came here for. We plan to learn each other's last name this yeah. weekend. I, when I see what we, we're gonna get out of this, when I see her across the bar after we do this whole thing, I'm gonna nod. She's going to nod 
and that's going to be our relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to be in a great place. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Beck and Austin arrive first to the big house. Uh, they're like, wow, this place is huge. They go down to the basement, and then Austin has this realization. Oh, my gosh. This house belongs to, like, a really big Broncos player. Like, I'm a huge fan. And Becca's like, okay. Like. This this whole thing is weird, okay, for, for many reasons. First of all, the show won't name who it is at all. Why? Did they not get his permission? <clears throat> I guess so, because on After Party, he, Rudy literally she asked, asked them, <laughs> and they still didn't say the person's name. <laughs> he was like uh, a, 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 a former player, or not even a former player. He was uh, he played for the Denver, Bron Denver Broncos, and I'm a really big fan. Yeah, I feel like he said it, and they cut it out, and yet they still left in that whole Oh, you feel like he said it? Probably, and they just cut it out. Okay, well, for and those that don't know. This house belonged to Von Miller. My first thought was Peyton Manning. That was my first thought, because that's the most famous Bronco I know of besides, like, John Elway. But, yes, Von Miller makes so much sense. And, of course. Why does that name sound familiar? <laughs> Which name? John Elway. Very old Broncos uh, player. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I know him from football. I mean, that's what his, you're... it's his name. Is he famous in any other right? Not really. Mm. Uh, but we, we, you know, it can't be a famous person without some sort of connection <laughs> to Asia wealth. Asia, do you want to you want to explain how you know Von Miller? Literally, it's a small world. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we went to high school together. He graduated 07. I graduated 2009. Um, so we were in high school at the same time. I was in band when he played football at DeSoto High School. I was good friends in high school and like junior high with his cousin, like his first cousin. Um, if you ran into Von Miller today, would he recognize you? We no, we didn't. We didn't like know each other like that. Mm -mm. No, they they do have like a Von Miller Day now back in DeSoto High School or, or in DeSoto, Texas. Um, well, listen, they, may, they might have canceled. They might have canceled that day recently because Von <laughs> has been Von has been in some uh, issues recently. I think they did have it recently because I thought about that. I was like, he's been in a little bit of trouble. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, I, I I feel like every time it happens, I see like social media posts and stuff about it happening. But yeah, like. He had um, a little brother that was in my grade, so who was the cat? Who was the coach when I played um, flag football, <laughs> like my senior year of, uh, or like powder puff football, mm -hmm. uh, my senior year of high school? But yeah, it was like small world. That's I was like looking at that. I said, "That's someone from Desoto, Texas, was able to live in this lavish made, house. It's made it big." And okay, the other weird part of it, besides the age of wealth connection, <laughs> is just Austin's giddiness at this. I mean, I understand there's a certain level of like, I thought you were cool. gonna relate. No, I mean, I, I, I understand, like, this is pretty cool, but to be that giddy about it and be like, I'm gonna go sleep in his bed. First of all, this has been converted into an Airbnb. Okay, <laughs> right. there ain't no more Von Miller beds that he has slept in he took all These that the sheets he used no <laughs> false he took all that to buffalo with him where he barely plays now um wow none of these beds him. Oh, whatever none of these <laughs> beds are von miller's beds these are new beds that were purchased to get this other stream of revenue selling this thing as an airbnb Especially that, only that people... bed orion was staying in yeah that little small <laughs> ass bed you think it's a von miller bed and then when Austin finally got to the the palace bedroom in in this in this house, another little ass bed. Von Miller is not sleeping that little ass look like almost a twin bed, not even a queen size bed that Austin got in later that night. Yeah, it has That's to be some type of bed. California king. Yeah, Austin, like you, you were able to sleep in the same room as this man slept in three years ago. <laughs> relax calm down breathing the same air yeah, he was just here he left an hour before we got here 
too much. <laughs> he was very excited. If someone was like, you could spend the night at Lamar Jackson's house. And I'm like, why would I want to do that? Is, <laughs> is Lamar going to be there? No? Then, no. Why? Why? Why would I want to do that? Oh, my gosh. You get to be where he was. Okay. I'm sure I was many places he was at some point. We're both in Baltimore. <laughs> Big deal. I mean, if somebody was like, hey, this, like, I'm in an Airbnb, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And they're like, oh, this is actually Beyonce's old house. I'd be like, whoa, that's really cool. But I wouldn't think, oh, I need to sleep in the master bedroom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, it's like, oh, okay, that's a cool, that's a really cool, fun fact. You know, that'd be awesome. I'm sure Asia would take hundreds of pictures. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Y'all, Beyonce was here once. <laughs> I took a picture of when I saw Solange in Philadelphia. Me and my sorority sisters walked by. She was sitting in a restaurant and we see her. And we're like, hey, Solange, oh my gosh, you're amazing. She's like, thank you. Y'all are so beautiful. I was like, you're so sweet. After she was uh, 15 feet, peasants. Don't get too close. <laughs> After we ate brunch, we passed back through. She was gone. And so we went and took pictures at the table that she was sitting at. <laughs> But hey, uh, this is different. She was just there. <laughs> it's not different. It's, it's different. not. Not at all. She was recently there. Did you smell the seat cushion? <laughs> no. And we took pictures uh, and then the waiters came up. They said, y'all saw Solange too? We were just like, oh my gosh, she's here. Oh, brother. And that's just Solange. Imagine Beyonce. Imagine. <laughs> You would have stolen the the, the table and the seat. <laughs> I'm Come on, y'all, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, ma'am, I'm sorry, you can't bring a table. Uh, I this actually have to travel table? with this. <laughs> yeah. This is Beyonce's table. They'd be like, oh, in that case, let me let's get in a separate seat. <laughs> like, can I check it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll walk home. That might be I need to with this table in my hands. <laughs> Just call an Uber. <laughs> um, so. We get to the point where Emily and Brennan ar arrive and um, they walk in. And did Brennan say it right here or did he say it before? Right here. And okay. Literally so he, as they're walking through the house, he's like, separate rooms? All right, cool. Separate rooms. Like, just so in the <laughs> crappiest way possible. Now, I did wonder when we were in their apartment earlier and Emily was like packing her stuff. In that room, there was, there were, it's like a pink comforter. A pink. Well, we'll get we'll we'll get to comforter talk later. It was like a pink sheet. I was like, I wonder if they're staying in separate rooms now. Because yeah, that's do they have two that. bedrooms? Yeah, I I would imagine so. Or you know, I wouldn't even be surprised if it came out that he's just not even staying there anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> he was back because he was already back. Right. He's yeah. like, I'll come over for the scene. Okay. Right. Exactly. But I was he like, comes I wonder... in with his glasses. <laughs> I wonder if Brennan, like, because I don't think, I, I, for some reason, just don't see Brennan sleeping in a pink comforter. I, I don't know. I feel like mm -hmm. he's just too, like, I, I wouldn't, I, I'm not sleeping in no pink sheets or pink comforter. I'm not doing that. So I just did wonder if they're already sleeping separately, you know. In Probably. Because, yeah, because, like, it's like, why not? If you are sleeping in the same bedroom at home, why do you have mm -hmm. to sleep in a separate bedroom here? And so we get a confessional from Emily. She's like, she's not surprised that he took the friend approach and wants to sleep in separate rooms. So immediately, Austin grabs Brennan. Emily gravitates to Becca in the kitchen. Austin is so excited to show. I'm sure he said, dude, this is Von Miller's house. Bro, bro. <laughs> like, literally, literally, we get into the bros and dudes immediately. Brennan's, yes. bro, imagine the parties you could throw here. <laughs> right. Did you really say that? He's like, really imagine the chicks. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> Look, we're married. <laughs> Shouldn't be saying that. He probably told that to Austin once they got to the downstairs. I would not see that. I wouldn't put that past him. Austin's like, what would we do with women here? <laughs> what would be the point of that? <laughs> oh, but everyone else is too hard on Austin. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so Emily... Why do you want women here? Ruin the vibe. <laughs> Emily says this is such a dude space. Um, it really she, is. It's like, it, it's just wall one wall big man cave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Like you can smell the masculinity as you walk in. <laughs> uh, so Emily, Emily says, like, the word of the weekend is luck. She's hoping she gets lucky. Becca hopes she gets lucky. That's the word of the weekend. You, yeah, hold on, Adrian. You, you smell that? Oh, am I? Eyes, <laughs> eyes are watering. What the heck? Don't worry, don't worry. It's Orion, not Onion. Oh no, it's Onion. <laughs> Here comes Onion in a dingy ass green truck. Yeah, what did what did Becca call it? His green machine. The green machine. Yeah. What, what color was the truck on your TV? Is my question. To you. It was solid green, but okay. I will say later. This truck was so green, even it showed up as green on Asian TV. Yes. <laughs> Later, when Becca comes out and says, this is my green shirt, that was black. Oh, yeah, no. no. <laughs> I said, I said, maybe Orion, I, I was like, maybe Orion's truck is yellow. This was your moment, Asia. To pause the TV, mess with the color on your, <laughs> on your, on your <laughs> until that dress turns to green. And that's when you know. You I feel like it can all, when I've done that before uh, with Kevin Frazier. His suit was coming off a different color and it only was getting like a pale color. I'm, don't worry. I am working on it. That is in, that is my future birthday present. You got the construction workers expanding the movie theater, <laughs> getting the bigger screen, all that stuff you have to do. Oh, right. I get the permits together. When I try to sell this project. TV, like the color may or may not be off sell this tv you're just gonna toss it out the window no. uh, so um okay so yes onion does show up by himself uh he said you know it's, it's strange showing up to a couple's retreat i agree yeah i agree no for kidding. all of y'all <laughs> no kidding you're right he is nervous about how receptive lauren will be to conversation uh because they haven't talked since the wedding but he does want to build a bridge to talk to her. My eyes can't inside. stop rolling. <laughs> I know. They all get inside. They're cheersing. Uh, Emily's talking to Orion and she's like, so I'm assuming nothing traumatic has happened since the wedding, right? And, and that can carry forward into this weekend, right? I'm sorry, Emily. Don't act like Lauren and Orion are bringing the drama. <laughs> here, come, here comes after party Emily, right? <laughs> 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 Trying to stir up drama, stir up trouble. We thought it was something new and different at after party. No, no. This is Emily 24-7. She's right. always trying to bring the drama. <laughs> exactly. So he's like, yeah, no, it's going to be fine. Like, I'm hoping it's going to be how it was at the wedding. Like, how I, I hope it's that's how it's going to be here. So then another single shows up. <laughs> here, here come another one. <laughs> Claire. Y'all just start filing in. <laughs> All single people, we we got the couples. It's like it's almost as if they said, "Okay, we have to get the couples in first to make this a legitimate couples retreat. Then we can bring in all the losers." <laughs> Claire shows up. We get a confessional. She's like, "I, you know, I was apprehensive to come because you know me and Cam aren't together anymore." So she does know. She said it out loud. <laughs> she said it out loud. She's aware that they are not together. And she feels no, bad. I meant together as in physically he's not here <laughs> next to me. Okay, that's what I meant. She feels bad about having fun while he's recovering after the surgery. And so she says that, you know, this is an opportunity to have fun with the other couple. So she's going to take that opportunity. Everybody. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Cam has been on like three dates <laughs> since he got out of the hospital. <laughs> Cameron, next time we see Cameron, I am in a committed relationship. <laughs> I am actually engaged. <laughs> I knew marriage was for me, just not with Claire. As soon as Claire. those divorce papers hit, Claire. <laughs> as soon as those divorce papers hit, me and the, me and the the fiance are are, are getting getting hitched. <laughs> right. Can't wait. Uh, so everybody goes down to the arcade. They're playing a little bit. Then everybody gets dressed. Becca comes out just for dinner. They're like getting dressed nicely for dinner. And Becca comes out in her green top, which definitely was black on my TV. And so they all walk out, sit down at this long table. And Brennan's like, is Lauren coming? 
First of all, why you mess- why you worried about Lauren? Keep Lauren's name out your mouth, Brennan. Okay, <laughs> right? you don't deserve to say Lauren's name as much as or- Onion doesn't either. Okay. I was like, why are you checking for Lauren? <laughs> uh and so um so then she does pull up she says like we get a confessional from her she says it is disappointing because her and orion have not talked since the wedding and he said he wanted to be friends but friendship takes effort Mm -hmm. and so she's really hoping like she could just bond with the wives she's not really looking for anything or with orion or or uh she said she was not looking for anything for orion or with orion (laughs) Yeah, that struck me too because I wrote it down. I was like, "Is that right?" <laughs> yeah, <she laughs> I, did say I looked that. at that stuff. Wait a second. And so I was like, she, "Basically, she don't want nothing from him she in any shape, form." I don't want nor need nothing from you. <laughs> right. Okay, so you could just, just stay back. I don't need to talk to you. You don't need to talk to me. Exactly. I do think it's so interesting how. So many times this episode, we hear, I can't wait to hang out with my girls. Can't wait to hang out with my boys. Why is there no crossing of the genders? No one's, no, none. It's almost, it's almost like a middle school dance. Boys on this side, girls on this side. Mm -hmm. None of them shall cross or meet. I was like, wow, y'all are really sticking to party, to tribal lines here. I mean, because if you think about, I mean, the last time we saw like a close friendship, like between like a different wife and another husband, the only thing I can like recently that comes to mind is like uh, Elajuan and Lindsay. Yeah. But I'm like, I guess so. re, who, you know, who else? It's like, damn, you're all really sticking with these, you know, <laughs> these gender, with these gender role lines mm-hmm. here. I mean, because they're, I feel like their relationships are, are rocky enough. Mm-hmm. You develop a, a good enough friendship with someone else that you're like, wait, like, hey, actually, how about, how about us? <laughs> hey, I mean, we could be a thing. Well, right. we're still married for right now. <laughs> right. So relax. You're like, let's wait, just we'll wait right, it out. But I mean, after the show, though, you know, hey. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so they are sitting around the table. Becca says how like her and Austin are going to have massages. Uh, Emily said, it, oh, and Claire was like looking for her invite. And she said, oh, just us. No, no, no. Emily said they booked, she booked ATVs. And Claire was like, oh, for who? She was like, oh, just us. This is a couple's retreat. Uh, for me and my husband. Or Claire friend was like, or whatever. oh, so am I just supposed to sit here? What am I supposed house? to do? What's our, re- we just have to go out on the basketball court. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get to go anywhere. We're going to fun excursion. Just be lucky you're allowed in the mansion, okay? Right. Take what you get. Imagine they booked former house of Von Miller, <laughs> and they only had Becca and Austin and Brendan and Emily. That is so sad. Four people. The four Airbnb people, people said uh, at four. <laughs> no, Mary First Light said, "Listen, we booked this a while ago. We've paid our money, okay? Y'all are all coming." I don't care who you are. Cam gets an exemption because of the sick note. Everybody else, you better get your asses here because you paid a lot of money for this mansion thinking that we were going to have 10 people up in here. So yeah, all y'all are coming. We're getting our money's worth. See, I'm surprised they didn't bring people from who who we saw like in the matchmaking special. <laughs> like on Love is Blind, how it's like the pod friends. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> Fill up the house. Go ahead. Yeah, bring them all. <laughs> Uh, and so, um, so then when Emily mentions that she booked ATVs Oof. for her and Brennan, Austin goes, oh, I hope y'all both crash. See, now they didn't have to do Austin like that. They did not have to do Austin like that. They did not have to leave that in. <laughs> they left it in. Man, they they trolled that man hard. In. They threw that man under the bus. <laughs> And then he was, and then uh, Emily was like, please don't say that. You know my track record. And this whole, uh, see, and here, I, I do not like the fact that we are sensationalizing Emily's crash. Cause that's what this was. It was almost just like, it was a special event at the end of the episode. There's all the lead up to this, mm-hmm. especially when we get to the actual moments before the crash. Oh, cause we knew it was coming. Yeah. And just it just almost felt like this event that we were all waiting for. Like I put in the Facebook group, it almost felt like a horror movie. We're just waiting for the jump scare. Like yeah. you know it's coming. The music, just like, 
you're just like watching through your hand. You're just like, I can't, I can't bear to watch this. Like, I know what's gonna happen. I know that something's gonna jump out and grab her and, and take her into the deep or something. And something's gonna happen. I just know it's like way of a jump scare in a horror movie. She's and the way they off. just like oh, hope you guys crash. Like, oh and first of all, even if even if that accident didn't happen, right? Is that funny? Like, why would he say that? It's not funny, but you know, I can see someone saying something dumb like that. Um, but it's just to leave it in the episode, I think was not in good taste on the editor's part. I mean, of course, yes, not on not in great taste on Austin's part, but definitely not in good taste on the editor's part to leave that in there. Like, oh you that's... know they thought, I cannot believe he said that. Well, let's, I mean, let's keep it for the irony. Well, especially in light of the fact that she does crash. Like if if she yeah. hadn't crashed, they would that wouldn't even have been the episode. Right. Oh, I just felt like I feel like a lot of stuff that we see with Austin sex aside is immaturity. Oh, Austin is a kid. Just <laughs> just, just take this whole uh, I could have sleep in Vaughn Miller's house. That's like an eight-year-old attitude, right? Like that's <laughs> not the fact that he's excited about it, just the amount of giddy that he got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is is a kid immature thing. Yeah. So it definitely shown in this episode a lot more than usual because he's so because of the giddiness when he first walks in, and then the fact that later on he's gonna just leave the bedroom because he just wants to sleep in the guy's bedroom where the same NFL player slept. What? So yeah, not not a good look for Austin at all. Oh yeah, so that he did say that, um, and so Claire says, "Well, this is like you know the couples retreat. Take out the couples, and you know this isn't how I expected it to be. But you know I'm just gonna take this time to grow. To grow and, uh, how? How are you gonna? <laughs> how are you gonna grow for this? And I want to talk about the concept of a couples retreat, right?" What what is the purpose of this? I I've never really gotten the purpose of the couples retreat, other than just to just like have get away. Fun. I I almost felt like a, a couples retreat to me sounds like a because there's these like you know men's retreats, women's retreats, and certain you know aspects or areas of of life where you go and you actually do activities and workshops to talk about like work on communication, work right. on these things, yeah. I almost think it should be a thing where they go there and they get counseling from the experts. Like the experts, I almost yeah. think that would be that should should or would be a thing on a couple of the street. This is just it's just a hangout. I don't know why. Doctor <laughs> Rupert had, said, "I ain't going out there." Uh, <laughs> we've had some good retreats. We've definitely had some drama filled retreats. Like we're not going to deny that. No one will ever forget the Michaela she hulking at the retreat. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I will never forget that as long as I live. But what is the exact purpose of this? Especially since it's now, even in the last seasons, where all we did was these dumb, you know, what was it? Like lumberjack games. Just dumb nonsense. They did like a pageant. Yeah. like Yeah. Eh, it was, eh. But I mean, if we did some actual work on this retreat, I would, I'd be down for that. But what is the purpose of this? Yeah. I just thought of something. Like, they... The experts obviously don't live in Denver, but does Dr. Pia? She's here every week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm close by. I can just I can just pop in. <laughs> right? I was like, let me look it up real quick. Where is her home base? <laughs> I'm not sure. Is she staying in Vaughn Miller's house? <laughs> right. She's like, actually, y'all can use my place. Uh. So. So yes. Okay. Where were we? Uh, Lauren. She said she almost didn't come. She did not see the value in coming. She didn't see what she would get out of this weekend. But she did ultimately decide to come because she could just zen out, stay grounded. uh, Because she's had such a great month. And Clara's like, I'm glad y'all are both here. (laughs) She said, Clara, I came for you. (laughs) I ain't going for this man. (laughs) Show Orion have, like, make a face. And Orion's like, wait, you know, uh, you know, now, I know that me and Lauren are not at the same level as other people. I was surprised he didn't take out his script and start reading it because that's what it felt like. <laughs> He's like, maybe if I put it on my watch, they can't tell I'm reading. I know. <laughs> uh, he said, we're not at the same level. I was like, what are you talking? They're couples. 
Y'all aren't. What do you mean at the same level? Y'all are y'all have been a couple for over a, mo a month now. <laughs> yeah. He said, but I'm proud of where we both are at. Um, and so we get a confessional and she's just like, she feels like he's he's just trying to show face in front of the other people. I'm so glad she said it. I'm so glad they left it in there. Mm -hmm. Because I, I could see a world where they try and, you know, help Orion, help Onion save face mm -hmm. and act like this is authentic. But I'm glad she's calling it out and I'm glad they're leaving it in the episode. Same. Because it's just kind of like, it's showing us that she's not being fooled by this. Like, even yeah. if the other people were like, oh, he's such a good guy. You know, they're really trying. No, please stop. Because <laughs> it's almost like fourth wall breaking. It's just like, yeah. you know, Orion is trying to save face on TV and we're calling it out. So yeah. I, I, did, I did like that it was in there. Yes, same. So then we get <laughs> a shot of all the single people going to bed. All the singles. Every all how many including people are in this? Including Emily and Brennan. Yeah, how many people are at this retreat right now? We've got like what? Uh, Nine. No, seven people. Oh, because Michael and Chloe said yeah, we have seven people. There were six shots of people getting ready for bed. <laughs> yeah. You know, five singles mm -hmm. and one couple. Like yeah, I was that's like, so that's sad. a lot of bedrooms. It's so sad. They like we needed more bedrooms for these people. Real quick on Beck and Austin. They did say, like, Austin specifically picked a bedroom saying, oh, this will give us the most seclusion. My gonna question of, is... There's going to be a lot of sex going on, so we need to be far away from everybody. My question is, mm -hmm. you walked in this house. You're so hyped that it's Von Miller's house. Why didn't you pick the, the main bedroom from Jump? Good question. He just um, wanted to be far away so no, no one would hear all the sex we're having tonight. <laughs> so the, they get in bed. They're not in the in the main bedroom, but Austin gets in bed with Becca. And he's like, all right, love you, good night. And she said it back. And then she's like, okay, well, I'm going to lay on your chest. And he's like, I don't know why, but okay. <laughs> it's weird, all of it. <laughs> Oh, that's weird. What? <laughs> then we get one hour later. One hour later. <laughs> it's like the SpongeBob. So let, let so yeah, one hour later. How wh where how does production catch this? Is production outside <laughs> of the bedroom? Like slipping well, a microphone they, they under the door? They have to be staying there. But how do they catch this? They caught, they caught this at the exact moment. He's getting up and leaving. He, he had to have already gotten up. And they're like, wait, wait, Austin, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm going to. No, we need you getting out of here. How bed. do they know he got up? <laughs> like, they, I just feel like, are they waiting outside the door with like a glass? Like They're probably just there shutting down, you know, getting re like. they're think they're doing it It's yet? not just the, the nine of or the seven of them in this house. I know. I just felt like. They're not why? driving home tonight. I felt like I felt like almost, we almost saw the exact moment he got up out of bed. That wasn't no way. There is absolutely no way that was the exact moment. That was a maybe. We need I, a shot of you getting out of bed. You think it made him reenact him storming you, out of bed? Do you know what show we're watching? Yeah. <laughs> It, this it, is it, this is the realest show around. No, oh, I forgot. No. It just it just felt it felt weird to me how because it felt like a natural moment, and that that moment we witnessed felt they got natural. you. Listen, I just, none of these people are that good of actors. Okay, let's get that straight. I felt like they were like they no, were waiting because she's outside. The room. She was still annoyed. Whether he's yeah. getting up for the first time or he's getting up for it to be on camera, she's still annoyed. <laughs> it was just so weird how ready they were to catch all that. Like, like they're waiting outside. Like, as soon as you start hearing the noises, we're <laughs> we're gonna put the mic in next to the door because this is it. This is the moment. It feels like a simple case of we see Austin walk into. Wait, what are you doing? Oh, I'm gonna because it could have easily been a next morning. So last night, Austin actually got up and went to the other room. That's what I'm saying. They were so ready to catch this moment. I was like, that's so weird. That they're so ready for this moment. I think it was simply they did not go to bed yet. Like, are they patrolling the halls, the camera? Like, something's about to, something's bound to happen around here. <laughs> no. Like, what's going on over there? Is that Austin? There's no way they're going to bed before them an hour later. This isn't 4 a.m. 
know. It, just, it felt it felt really weird to me. How, how ready <laughs> you act like they said four hours and thirty minutes later. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him. Uh, so he gets out of bed. He grabs some stuff, and um, we get a confessional from uh, Becca. She's like, "I don't know what happened." He rolled out of bed. He says, I'm going to go sleep in the big bedroom and you can come if you want. And she was like, okay, are we going to do something? And he just stood in the doorway and he was just drunk and said, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I, wanna go, I don't just want to go sleep in Von Miller's bed. I, 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 <laughs> I, that guy, I look up to that guy. He's, he's one of my heroes, one of my idols. I just want to, I just want to sleep in the same, the same space he did. <laughs> Listen, what the this sent me over the edge on after party. Rudy is trying to explain the situation. She's like, well, you know, nobody, you know, you've been drinking and no one wants your first, like your first time together to be like, you're so drunk. And you may not remember it. And then you see Austin in the corner. Yep, exactly. Rudy, exactly. Yeah, Back me yes. up. Back me up. Shut up, Austin. That is, <laughs> you literally are using every excuse in the book <laughs> at this point. Don't try to, it's like, okay, if that was one thing, okay. If that was one thing, okay. It's just like, he's looking for any reason, any reason to be any justified. <laughs> <laughs> You're not talking to the pepper and cinnamon. You're talking to me, okay? <laughs> any reason to any be reason? justified. Any any reason reason to <laughs> you talk to me? Any reason? <laughs> if I wake him up, they're going to think I'm talking to them. He's looking for any reason to be justified in his actions that have taken place. Can I ask this question as well? Why is Austin constantly on After Party? This man <laughs> brings no entertainment value and he explains nothing about what's going on. He went so many episodes without being on After Party. He had, he's like, on all the time. been on one. Yeah, and then it was like, oh, he's going to be on next week. <sighs> Lauren and Austin are back next week with, I think, Chloe. Lauren can be back. <laughs> Lauren's fine. <laughs> yeah. Why is Austin here all the time? I don't understand. Bring Emily back. <laughs> I want Emily back to bring stir the tea. Because Austin gives me nothing. Bring Cameron back. Cameron's like, I ain't on the show, and I'm not on the after party then. <laughs> Leave yeah, me right. alone. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that was just so annoying that he was just looking for, like, yeah, that's that's why it didn't happen. <laughs> oh, I do think the fact that he was drunk is probably, like, the main reason it didn't happen. And and it encouraged the shenanigans of you know what you know what? I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna go do it I'm gonna go sleep in, I'm gonna go sleep in Von Miller's room I'm just I'm just gonna do it and yes because no one's saying he's wrong for like not being in the mood because he was drunk mm -hmm. it's just like the why are you so careless to even get to that point when you know y'all have plans later exactly yeah <laughs> so. Uh, you know so it was probably I, Brendan. You know it was probably Brendan encouraging him the whole night. Come on, bro, take another one. Take another one down, bro. What are you? What are you scared? What are you? Uh, a p word? What, what's what's the matter, bro? Because uh, Brendan don't got no plans tonight. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brendan's sleeping by himself. Exactly. Why do we have to see Brendan get ready for bed shirtless? Keep your shirt on. <laughs> oh yeah. gosh. Yeah. So yes. So needless to say, Becca was not pleased with this oh and lauren let lauren be an example for how to support your friend because what emily did last week i don't know what that was but this week with lauren and saying like oh well you know from her perspective you know the oh come if you want that's not an invitation that doesn't feel like you want her to be there that just feels like that i felt like she did a really good job supporting Becca in the situation. Well, and she also did it without trashing Austin. Because you know, <laughs> you know, if Emily was there, she would have she would have dragged the She's like, why Austin. did you need to sleep in um Von Miller's bed? An unnamed <laughs> football player's bed. <laughs> right. Uh, why'd you just get up? Why did yeah. you drink? <laughs> she Lauren, was so mad. Lauren handled it with grace as she does yes. everything else. Um, so yeah, that was nice. Uh so <laughs> Speaking of Lauren, Lauren and Claire decide to go out to the basketball court 
and sh- shoot some hoops. Now, I don't know, like Claire specifically, I don't know if anyone else watched the show Orange is the New Black uh, back, <laughs> back in the day. But why did it to me feel like Claire was in prison with these like <laughs> prison sweats in the yard playing basketball? That's just like... <laughs> Just like the vibe I got from Claire, like she was in prison shooting hoops. Oh, my. I thought you were gonna say she looked like someone, uh, from Orange is New Black. I, I can't remember her name on the show, but I feel like her name in real life starts with a T, Taylor but, something. Yeah, but yes, I could see that. Like, just, why, why do you look like you're wearing prison garb? <laughs> What's going having on? Some time. She said, I can't. We, what I knew when I was coming, we weren't leaving the house. So I brought my comfy clothes, okay? Yeah. They made me go outside in the cold. <laughs> yeah. They said, we need y'all somewhere around. else. They're yeah. like, well, can, can we go down to the arcade? No. Mm-mm. We've been there, done that. Go outside. <laughs> <laughs> y'all been in this house all day. Y'all need to go outside get some air. Okay, mom. Uh, so Claire tells Lauren, like, you know, I was apprehensive about coming, but I'm really enjoying it. And I feel so supported right now. Uh, she's like, you know, sometimes I do take it personal that that uh, Cameron wants his space. Uh, like, I wish he would lean on me a little bit more, but I get it. You know, he wants his space and he wants that time. And it, Lauren- the man was itching to get away from you. He could not <laughs> wait. He was badgering you to call this thing off. Yeah, that's how much he did not want to be around you in the first place. Heart flutter or no, he wanted to be out. Yeah. So uh, Lauren says, like, you know, at least you and and Cameron are on good terms. Me and Orion aren't aren't on any terms. Little does she know. Claire and Cameron haven't talked in weeks. (laughs) Yeah, we're totally on good terms. We talk all the time. I mean, mainly it's me calling his phone and going to voicemail. Voicemail, yeah. You know, me sending texts that don't get answered. But yeah, the lines of communication are wide open. Sure, for sure. Um, Lauren says, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really glad you're here. Or no, she said, no, Lauren said that Orion said like, oh, like, I'm so glad you're here. And that like, you know, that, you know, me and Lauren are, you know, whatever. And she's just like, and I'm like, who said that? <laughs> Do you know where that's from? No, I don't. It's from, uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, it was, they, the, all the ladies were sitting around it. The most iconic voice to say it was uh, Candy, um, who was on like Celebrity Big Brother. Yeah, I don't know. But it's Candy just like, oh, who said that? Who said that? Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it to you after. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> it's funny. But that's exactly what Lauren was referencing. And so um, Lauren says that she is on the fence about if they need to talk about anything. Um because anytime they talk, she just doesn't get clarity. And she has she feels like there's this lingering tension between them. And she feels like it's a lost cause. I feel like any conversation now is just production driven. It's mm-hmm. the only reason it's happening is because production wanted them to. Because yeah. I felt like the wedding conversation should have given everybody closure. Yeah. Like I feel I feel like they did not foresee the retreat coming. <laughs> and they're like, all right, we're gonna. We're going to mend fences. We're going to go our separate ways and not see each other again until like the reunion or something. You're like, oh, we have to be in the same place like again. I, I yeah. Guess, I guess we'll have the same conversation we had at the wedding. Because I, feel like, that's, <laughs> exactly. I feel like that's what this is going to be. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> so that was it with Lauren and Claire. We cut over to uh, Austin and Becca. They are getting a massage. It was supposed to be a couple's massage. But they ended up getting these like cone hats. Yeah. <clears throat> what? Yeah. This was so weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, uh, Becca, <laughs> I just went through everyone's name in my head. Becca does, we have a confessional from her. She does feel defeated and rejected after last night, but she says he did apologize. So she did accept his apology. And so she's still looking forward to their first un- uninterrupted night. And so they go into the sauna. This man lays Austin down and is like hitting him with some like leaves or something. So this guy off the bat was weird. Mm-hmm. He was way too enthused to be doing this. Did and it? then go ahead. And then we find out on after party <laughs> that this man don't even work for the spa. <laughs> right? He just has some weird kink 
of wanting to give give people this experience to beat them with leaves. He's just a rando. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, how did this happen? Yeah, somebody, somebody, someone needs to look into that guy because that guy His face has is on camera. something going on. He's got bodies in the basement. He's got some weird stuff happening because that ain't right. Yes, that ain't right. So they go into like a cold tub, and so um, Becca's like, you know, it may not seem like it, but it was very relaxing. <laughs> yeah, I did appreciate that we skipped the actual massage because we literally just saw a couple's massage last episode mm-hmm. when they said they were getting a couple's massage like another couple's massage was awkward was different awkward stupid small talk but it is they almost all skipped right over the actual massage part they're like all right yeah. here's, here it is let's move on so i did appreciate i did appreciate that we didn't get a prolonged uh spa experience because they could have spent 15 minutes on this but it was a quick it was a nice quick five minutes in and out yeah so afterwards, they're sitting down. He says that she did great. She took the beating. She got in the cold tub, and she almost did the bucket dump. And he looks very proud of her. He gives her a kiss. Uh, he said he really enjoyed it. And he's like, I know we've had our ups and downs, you know, with our issues. And we know what our issues are, but, you know, we're working on them, and things are going to get better. And then they cheers to happiness. We're working on them. Are we? We're oh, actively no. working. We really, yeah, we really are. So last but not least for the retreat section, uh, Emily and Brennan. Oh, they're boy. out on their ATVs. I told you they're ATVs, didn't I? <laughs> There's yes. it's snow, it's snow. Ah, uh, yes, you were you were correct. You were correct. They're ATVs, not snowmobiles. I thought mm-hmm. well, I will say this did give me like a little Trauma flashback. Yes. <laughs> From when I crashed uh, my snowmobile, because um, it could have e- <laughs> it could have easily gone so bad. Especially my older mate was on with me. It literally was. We came up to a turn, the ski slipped, and I tried to overcorrect because I was trying to avoid. There was a tree that I had to avoid, and I skirted by the tree, and then we just hit like a big pile of snow. So on impact, like I hit the windshield. But I just hit my lip, so my lip was busted the rest of the trip. But that was, like, the extent. I'm like, we had these helmets, too. Like, it could have gone so bad like that. Like Emily. And, the, and just the, the foreshadowing was just like, why mm-hmm. why do we have to do this? I know. She's she, she like, they, they catch her going out to the car to get to the ATV place. She's like, this is going to be so fun. We love doing adventure stuff. This is thrilling. It's going to be so much fun, blah, blah, blah. I think she even says, like, pray for us or something. It's like. <sighs> she just wants good vibes. Yeah. <sighs> so they're just riding along. We get some music. And cut like if you look at Emily in the distance, she just veers off the road, and then it cut to the camera that was on her uh, ATV, and she's just like, "There's so much blood." She's cut her head. Um, How did she Brennan, cut her head? She had a helmet on. <laughs> I know, unless it like she hit something that hit her hel- helmet off. Like it maybe if she hit forward, I don't know. Um, and so then. Brennan parks, he goes back to her. Um, he like he took her, she had on like a beanie. He took her beanie off and like applied the pressure with her beanie. They call 911. They come and they wrap her head and they put her on in a neck brace. And she's just like, Am I gonna be okay? We hear from Lauren on after party that th- there was so much blood on her eye that she couldn't see. Uh listen. Give Brennan his due, okay? <laughs> he, he saw what happened. He did a little jog over mm-hmm. that book and administered the first day. He held her hand, okay? He give, did hold her hand. Give the man some credit, okay? He's at least human enough to uh, see a person in distress, even though he cannot stand this person, and do what he can to help and comfort her. So he give, did give, that. give him that credit. I do. I, I feel like Brennan handled this well. Yeah. Because, like any anything else would have just been shocking for anyone. I almost, I almost just, you know, I would, I would be surprised, but I wouldn't if he was just like, oh. 
Always something. I was having fun. God. <laughs> and I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we got more of that next episode. We're just like, I don't know if he'll say it out loud, but mm, I, the, I really hope not. In the next time on, <laughs> they really get him good. Cause he's, you know, the next time on, he's like, you know, and sickness and in health. <laughs> yeah, he did say that. <laughs> like, and uh, the way he looks at her in the <laughs> hospital room, he's just like, I could be hanging out with Austin right now at Von Miller's mansion. But I'm sitting here in a hospital. You. Thanks a lot, Emily. <laughs> it's just it's just the vibe I, I get from, from Brendan that radiates from that off of br- it. Brief clip. Yes, so that brief <laughs> clip. Maybe it's me and my preconceived notions of Brendan that's really flavoring my opinion, but that's yeah. what I feel like. Do so so yeah, we do see them in a the hospital next episode, and we see that the other couple the couples are gonna go to a trampoline park. Uh I don't know if Brennan and Emily are going to make that. I paused it, and I think Brennan is there. I mm. think Brennan's in the background. Okay. Uh, of the trampoline, of the trapeze shot. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Uh, I, you know, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they were just like they patched Emily up and like, all right, you're good to go. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I, I'm sure it was like a gash. Yeah, on she her probably head. just needed stitches. Yeah, like it wasn't. You know, I don't think it was anything okay. life changing. Um, it was traumatic in the moment for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, it's probably, they probably stitched her up. It's like, all right, good to go. I mean, the woman broke, sprained her wrist and kept going with no uh, help <laughs> at yeah. all. I mean, and then something else is going to happen because she still has her brace on the uh, after party. I'm just wondering if that was from that. We just don't know it yet. She also, mm. you know, fractured her wrist or something, and we'll find out that tomorrow and she just didn't you know she just didn't feel it in the moment because probably all of her you know adrenaline was up and she yeah. just wasn't feeling at the moment i don't know who knows whatever uh but i will be surprised if she's back partying with the group by next episode yeah well uh real quick let's, before we move on to michael and chloe becca and austin scale scale of one to five one think one being we don't think they'll be together by the reunion five being we think they will be together what are you thinking where was I last week? We both were at twos. I will leave them at a two. Same. Yeah, leave them at a two. There was n- no no progress that uh could be heading in the right direction. I mean, they got along, but you know, it's what friends get along for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Emily and Brennan. Well, they don't really get along that much. <laughs> <laughs> they slept in separate beds, so zero. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so one and one, Lauren and Orion, Claire and Cameron are single people. Um, all right. So what are Michael and Chloe up to? Michael and Chloe wake up on their final day of their honeymoon, aka the <laughs> third day of their honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. Because they got a shortened honeymoon. Um, we find out Chloe actually slept well she didn't have any more panic attacks so that's good i wonder how far i wonder how close they are to the actual retreat i wonder how like i wonder if it would have been easier for them just to go straight to the retreat rather than go oh all rather than checking apartment. in at the yeah. yeah uh but yeah chloe has slept better no more panic attacks um and you know she compliments him on how well he handled her the night before and all of her emotions and all the things that she was talking about um the night before He tells her, you know, that last night was he got some good insight on her and how she communicates and shares things and says at some point it'll be his turn to share things that are uncomfortable with her. And he hopes that she gives him the same type of, you know, grace and care. Chloe says they have a lot of selling to do, but once they get to the new place, things are going to be so much more comfortable. Guess again. (laughs) Uh, Michael says, you know, might need to lean on her more. Um, than, than before because they're going to be in a new space it's going to be a little uncomfortable so you might need to lean on her more uh, in a confessional michael says they have both been independent for such a long time and they're both gonna to have to adjust to sharing space now and he is looking forward to bringing their lives together and working on it every day did you notice in this conversation that he has a tooth gem a tooth gem yeah i was like i feel like that's such a gen z thing to do what is that is that like it's a, just a, a, a on your tooth? Semi, mm-hmm. it's not yeah. even it's not permanent it's a temporary solution but it's like you can like brush your teeth you can go about your day it's not going to easily come off you have to like a temporary you, solution solution to what no it's not a temporary i mean it's not a permanent permanent thing. 
It's just for yeah. decoration. Yes. Like you can still brush your teeth, do things. Um, but it's, like it's, it's weirder by the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I see mostly people with Gen Z, but here, here's Michael. Michael is a young 38. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Cause I'm like, to me, it kind of looks like you just have like a bracket for braces. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Michael and Chloe get to the new apartment and they, they both seem to like it. Um, in a confessional, Michael says he feels great in the apartment. Uh, this is more like real life than the honeymoon was. And here they're going to learn more about each other's comfort zones. Um, and you know, they tore the apartment. It's typical part. Well, I mean, we've seen this part. We, let's not act like we haven't seen this apartment a thousand times already by this time. <laughs> right. It's kind of like the flipped of, uh, it's this. It's almost the smaller version of uh, most similar to like Emily and Brennan's. Yeah, uh, they they pick out their bathroom sinks. Uh, you know, he, what is it? He lets her have the choice of sink. Mm -hmm. uh, so then we get to the closets, uh, which is very important to Michael. Uh, since since he gave her choice of bathroom sink, she gave him a choice of closets. He's like, good, because I'm going to need it. Uh, it professionally says, you know, he would have taken the small closet, but Chloe gave him the big one, meaning she is so selfless. And he thinks the fact that they both compromise are going to help him out in the long run. Uh, Chloe says she loves, you know, everything the way it is. She wouldn't change anything. In confessional, she says, you know, up to now, it's all felt like a fantasy, but now it's starting to hit. It's starting to hit home. I feel like she said it's starting to hit her now about a thousand times, even on the honeymoon. Like a thousand and five times. Yeah, everything's mm -hmm. starting to hit me now. You said that like the day after the wedding. <laughs> It's just it just keeps hitting her. Just keeps hitting her. Uh, <laughs> Michael says, "You know, I really want to bring some of my art from home here." Uh, he talks about some of his paintings, and he talks about a painting in particular. Uh, one called what? I don't know what it's called, but basically, it is Saturn eating his son. And if you're watching the YouTube, Asia has just popped up the most terrifying picture. <laughs> I think. Anyone has ever seen? Now we have we have done a little censoring on this photo because <laughs> Photoshop genius over here. Yeah, in the real life, <laughs> there's a pair of butt cheeks in this photo, but Asia has put on a nice uh, white little sticker there to cover up the butt cheeks. We are family friendly podcast. <laughs> I, I say family friendly, but then we have this actual. You censored the butt cheeks, but you did not censor this man literally eating someone. But you know, yes, I just it, I I feel like it needed to capture. Like, think about it. This is on Michael's wall. This is creepy. This is, <laughs> yeah. this is straight up creepy. Yeah. Oof. Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah. If you want to know more about the painting, it's called "Saturn Eating His Son." It's by the artist Goya. It's a whole thing about prophecies and something or other. It weird. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, he talks about more color paintings that his friend had made for him. Uh, he tells her that he is excited to get back into the real world with her. And, you know, she just says, yep. She, made, she has, in this moment, pretty much shut down. She's like, mm -hmm. yeah. her off switch was just completely off. It's like, wait, hello. Is anyone there? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like anything he says, she's like, yeah, totally. She's like hey. falling asleep in his face. It's like, hey, Chloe, I'm going to go to Mars tomorrow. She's like, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. totally, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Chloe, I want to wear, I want to wear your earrings. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Uh, in a confessional, Chloe does say that, you know, she's, she's, she's definitely an introvert. And then normally after big trip, you know, she would go on, she would spend the, the day that she came back just decompressing by herself. She says, uh, she literally, she literally sighs. She's like, but that's not going to happen here. <laughs> I guess we're just going to decompress together. And she just does not look happy about it whatsoever. But the part that gets me, for those of y'all that watched the episode, she's just like, yeah, we're going to decompress together. And then she like winks. And then she's like, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? I, I think winking is like her nervous tip. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's something she does when she's nervous. She's like, oh, sorry. Did I wink? I didn't mean to wink. Sorry. <sighs> like that. Her sorry, her whisper saying sorry was like, girl, what? Are you okay? <laughs> right. Uh, so the next morning, we wake up, and Michael has brought Chloe some coffee. He's like, it's probably trash coffee, but, you know, I know this is part of your routine. So I just, you know, I wanted to, wanted to get you back into your routine a little bit. 
She says, you know, you did go to sleep very early last night. <laughs> she says, yeah, I went to sleep about 7.45. <laughs> she says like, she was so... Is early. <laughs> yeah, she says she was so overwhelmed with everything. And it was a lot for her emotionally. And she needed a good night's rest. But now she's happy and peaceful. He tells her, hey, don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, even though he looks like Iron Man, he's also overwhelmed. He just expresses it differently. I say, you think you look like Robert Downey Jr.? I don't think so. <laughs> Close. Try again. This was his attempt at a joke. <laughs> uh, she tells him he's just so nice and considerate. Uh, in a confessional, she does say she doesn't think there could be a better match than Michael. He is really thinking of her all the time, being her rock in this moment. And she has never had someone be so thoughtful and attentive to her. Huh? What do you think about that? I I mean, I feel like he is saying all the right things. Rudy pointed it out on After Party. She's like, have you always just said the right things? He's like, no. I Like, there is a point I was very selfish. I didn't listen. He's like, I've just gotten to the point now where I listen and hear the person before responding. And I was like, oh, such a concept. I was like, I feel like this, and I know you feel differently, but I feel like this shows his maturity just in communication. I do feel like he communicates well. He, well, he over communicates. <laughs> I'll say that. Which is what every woman wants. Yeah, but it just it just feels off to me. It feels again. I said I said it last episode. It feels fake deep to me. But I do appreciate that he is a good listener and a good communicator. Do I want a bunch of Michaels on a season? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't want five Michaels. I want. Give me a maximum of two Michaels, okay, <laughs> per season, because uh, I want mess. And Michael just is not bringing that mess at all. I I appreciate the maturity. I appreciate the communication, but yeah, boring. Could you imagine Chloe with like? I'm trying to see what type of guy would just be like not receiving <laughs> what she's saying. Well, like not having an a. Uh, a mature response. Well, I mean, what is she saying that someone's going to have a bad response to? Oh, I'm so overwhelmed. Who, who, what are they going to say? Get I over can't it. do this. I don't even know. I, I still don't know what that was. Last episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, someone like a, I don't know, just a very immature person would be like, what do you mean you want to do this? You want to break up? You want to get divorced right now? Some, someone like that. Yeah, I guess. I can't think of an example. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just... It's interesting uh, for for Chloe, of course, to be like you know she's she's talking about oh he's so he's such a great match. No one's ever been as attentive and thoughtful. Uh, they talk about their apartments, and he warns her, "Listen, you're probably gonna think my apartments a lot, especially since you are a minimalist." <laughs> we'll circle around back to that in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we do the we do their apartment tours. Uh, she is showing him uh, her apartment. We get in this apartment. She has a trunk that is her granddad's old trunk from World War II. She refurbished it and painted it. And now it's her coffee table. Number one, I said, this is not a coffee table. This is a decoration table. Yeah. Okay. She even had a piece. Yeah. She even had a stupid little, what did she have on there? It was like a plant or was it a tray? Like the tray. Yeah. A tray. Oh, this tray again. This freaking tray came back. Stasha's bed, a bedside tray <laughs> popped back up here. Um, but that's not a coffee table. Okay. A coffee table. Chloe, Chloe's one of those people that eats at her dining room. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that ain't cool for me. The coffee table is for meals. <laughs> okay. How you want to be able gonna... to sit on a couch, yeah. put your food down. Yeah. You can't put anything down on that truck. It's going to slide off. It's like a, it was like a curved top. I'm just thinking of I'm just thinking of her granddad. You know, I don't know if I don't know if her granddad is deceased or not. Wherever granddad is, he's like, oh, you took my <laughs> nice trunk from World War II, my nice black cool trunk. You dressed it up all froofy, and now it's your coffee table. Fantastic. I'm just wondering. I I just don't know a single anything I've seen. For how minimalists live is not even like you could stop at the coffee table. Like I don't think yeah. a minimalist would have 
like this uh, huge uh, trunk that they've refurbished. A minimalist would have a IKEA small coffee table that they bought for like 30 bucks from IKEA. Mm-hmm. That's what they would have. No decoration, no nothing. It would just be because it's something that is, you know, utilized to set things down on. That's what because a minimalist is someone that Kirsten last season. Yeah. Ker- yeah. Kirsten, who was on the run, who was in witness <laughs> protection program, who did not really stay in that apartment. They just had to make it look like she did. Uh, but a minimalist has only the things that they need. Need, yeah. To live. And you need you, you kind of, I mean, do you need, need a coffee table? No. But if you had a coffee table, you're a minimalist. It would be a minimalist coffee table, which is just like, I just need something to set my stuff down. It could be like yes. two crates and a piece of plywood. That'd be fine. But Chloe's not a minimalist because we see more of this tour. And it's so weird. Okay, so let me back up. When they came in, Chloe has one little suitcase to take stuff out with, okay? <laughs> Puts a suitcase on the kitchen bar or whatever opens it up she has a decorative pineapple a gold pineapple that nicole, nicole sure did post it on her story oh i didn't even know that she said she liked it yeah see that's the girl off nicole's heart and then she what, is, what else she put in there some a globe, globe? a pink globe what <laughs> first of all a minimalist would not have this in their house at all minimalists mm-hmm. would not have Little tchotchkes, little decor Just things. Just little trinkets around. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and she put those in her suitcase. That pretty much filled up the whole suitcase. Yeah, that's it. You that's brought a carry on, girl. <laughs> this is all you're bringing back to your apartment. <laughs> right. Uh, it was such a weird scene. Yes. Um, we, t- we we keep going on the tour. Uh, and Michael, as he's going through this house, is like, you know, <laughs> with how much stuff she has, she says she's a minimalist. But I think she might be a closet maximalist. <laughs> ah, 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 Leave ah, Michael ah, alone. Ah, Leave Michael alone. A maximalist. He's like, oh, this guy. He's just, he's almost as funny as me. Oh, now nah, he's funny as me. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> he, the the Peloton in the room took me out. The Peloton with the boxing gloves on. I said. Girl, no you, minimalist. Are you a girl you to... from the Peloton commercial? It's like <laughs> no minimalist. You got to scoot in their room like this. <laughs> yeah, you have so much stuff here, you minimalist. I can barely move around. <laughs> like uh, I, did, I, I was, he, I wanted him to, to like. Okay, let's let's circle back. What do you think a minimalist is, Chloe? Please explain. Please, please give me your definition. <laughs> She's like, oh, I, uh, I'm not a hoarder. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's I think that's her definition. I don't have I don't have a whole bunch of stuff. I got a lot of stuff. I don't have a whole bunch of stuff. That's right. the, that's, that's the difference. Uh, Michael does say seeing all of this stuff gives him a better understanding of what her everyday life is like. Uh, he tells her, you know, hey, we're kind of closet closet kindred spirits. We're in the kind of the same realm here. Your closet looks like mine because we get in the Chloe's closet and there's a lot of clothes in there. Yeah, <laughs> she told us she could fit her whole closet. In the six bags that Michael brought. No, I'm Michael just closet. brought options. <clears throat> you didn't. I'm looking at your closet, Chloe. And I feel like I wouldn't be able to fit all that in six bags. I'm just saying. Is Chloe just in denial? I think she is. I think she <laughs> wants to be something that she's not, actually, is, is a thing. She's like, I really want to be a min- minimalist. And if I just say it and I keep saying it, how, who's going to check me? <laughs> <laughs> We are. We is. Yeah. We are. Uh, so yeah, they go in her bedroom. There's a Peloton, a bunch of junk. This is a bunch of junk on the table. Mm-hmm. Okay, minimalist. Ugh. She should have. Ne- if she had never said that, we wouldn't even. No, we, we would have care. nothing to say about her apartment. We might. We might even be like, huh? She doesn't have a lot of stuff. She's yeah. Like, <laughs> but no, because she said she was a minimalist. Now we have to drag you, Chloe. Now see what you made us do. Look what you made me do. Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> oh, that's why you know that. Well, partly. <laughs> um, so I was surprised. I was like, "Okay, Jason." I knew of the song. Okay. Um, so yeah, we see the Peloton. We see the boxing gloves. She talks to him about this boxing class she took, and I'm like, "Why do I 
need to know that why do i <laughs> I, I find myself nothing else to show i find myself saying that every time a michael and chloe segment is on like why do i need to hear about this non-interesting fact yeah <laughs> okay now is where things get really interesting because she's making her bed and she is trying to put her duvet cover on her duvet and she has to get like inside of the bed to get the duvet cover on. She and does not Mike- have to get inside of it. <laughs> and Michael, uh, he's apparently likes what he sees because he's kind of turned on by this. Now, this sparked conversation in my household. Let me tell you. <laughs> because number one, I asked my wife, I said, what is the difference between a duvet and a comforter? And I still don't understand what she told me. What did she say? She said a comforter is a plain piece of thing that you can put the duvet cover on. And so when you take the duvet cover, it's easier to wash your bedspread or whatever. So I said, so you put the comforter inside the duvet cover and that makes it a duvet? She's like, no. She's like, no, not at all. I was like, what? What do you mean? (laughs) What are you talking about? I swear, we we spent 10 minutes going round and round with this. I was like, what is the difference? Like, basically, a comfort, a, a duvet is a deconstructed comforter. So imagine a comforter, you know, it's soft on the inside. A duvet has the duvet outside, right? The duvet cover. And then it has an insert. You're not supposed to just sleep with the insert. The insert is the comfortable right. part. Uh-huh. You have to put it's that com- inside. It's a comforter part. The comforting part. No. And so... You put the insert inside of the duvet, and then it's amazing. And you can get different levels. That That's the thing. You can get different levels of, like, thickness for different seasons. Like, if you're in an area that actually has seasons, I don't. So I don't have multiple options. But you I definitely just have, have. You definitely have multiple duvets in your house. <laughs> no, I do That I, I just, know. No. That I know. If there's anything, I just have one. If there's anything that sounds like it has an accent on it, Asia has like 20. I know. And, and so then, <laughs> so listen, I've only been a part of this duvet life for a couple years. Duvet life. So <laughs> I love it though. Um, I will say the way she was putting it, I've never once considered putting it the cover on that way. The way that I put it on is I flip the the cu- the ins- the cover inside out. Then I grab the insert, like I put my arms in the cover, and then I grab the edges of the insert, and then I just like shake until I can like pull, and then it's completely on the insert. Fascinating. <laughs> um, no, so it's not think- a it's not a short ordeal. It's not like. Oh, I'm heading to bed. Crap. I was washing. I need to put my duvet. No, I need to just go ahead and sleep with a blanket. Because <laughs> it, it's like, a, it's kind of like a 10, 10, 15 minute ordeal. It could be longer. So if I put a duvet cover on, okay, I, I have this, this thing now that I'm calling a duvet. That's, that makes it a duvet that I put, because I put a duvet cover on something and I have No, it's comforter. specifically an insert. Like it's not just, a, you don't just put it on any random thing. Okay. It's specifically an insert. But if at if at one spot I have a comforter, and then next to it I have the duvet, what's the difference? A comforter is just one piece of sheet, or like it's a it's one thick cover, right? And the duvet is not as thick, but you can make so it most thick. of the time. You can, yeah. The, it depends on the insert you have. My so, insert I'm is just... like lighter, and so I had to like fluff it. And so it's kind of, right. it's it's thin a little bit, not too thin. It's it's thick enough to So what I'm getting from this with. is that a duvet and a comfort is the same thing. <laughs> That's they serve the same with. purpose. They serve okay. the same purpose, yes. Sure. It just, it, if anyone else is watching the current season of 90 Day Fiance, it just makes you think of one of the couples on there, Rob and Sophie, where they literally got into an argument because she wanted him to buy her a duvet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He didn't know what a duvet was. He got mad. It's like, I ain't buying no duvet. I, you know, you want to spend all this money on duvets and blah, blah. Come to find out, he already had like three duvets in his house. So, <laughs> was he thinking of like a bidet? 
he didn't know what it was. He was probably calling it a comforter like I would. <laughs> but, look, but he didn't know what it was. Even he didn't know he already had some. They were fighting about nothing. That's funny. He just was like, those are my comforters. <laughs> yeah. But look, it, it it's like if people that have quilts on their bed, it all serves the same purpose. It's just really what you're looking for. Hmm. Okay. I'll let it slide. I'll I'll let the I'll let the the discussion rest. Okay. <laughs> um. Let's see where where was I about this whole. He's in her room. Thing. They're in their room. She put, she's yeah. making she's making the bed. He's turned on by it because he likes what he sees when she crawls on the bed. I suppose. So we we get, this talk turns to jewelry, and apparently they both have pearl necklaces, and he says, "Oh, let me try yours on." Chloe says, what? The look on Chloe's face as he's putting on her necklace. She's had, and she had to help him. Uh Uh-huh. Immediately turned off. Immediate. Chloe says she has never had a man that leaned into his feminine side. And she isn't sure how she feels about it. She does say this in confessional, not to Michael. She says, I'm going to take it one day at a time, one day at a time, one day at a time, one day, one day at a time, one day at a time, one day at a time. I'm like, we're getting a personal diary session from Chloe anytime she's in a confessional because she's like, she says like, okay, this is like the appropriate thing to say. Right. And then she gets into her, like how she really feels as it progresses. And they just like, we're going to keep, we're going to keep that in there. We're, we're going to keep the camera keep- on you. Cause you do yeah. interesting things when you were just, yeah. <laughs> when you end your <laughs> sentences, we just let you spiral out of control. You do the weird <laughs> things. I one day, think one day at a time, one day, one day, one day at a time, one day at a time, <laughs> one day at a time. One day at a time. And so here's my thing. I think that Mike, so Michael does understand that he has a very eclectic, eclectic style. She has never, you can clearly tell, she has never even just met someone like Michael. She said as much. Right, yeah. Because, I mean, she tried to say she's never been, like, romantically interested. Mm -hmm. I think she is trying to wrap her mind around Michael's style, right? And so he's coming on a little strong, being like, hey, let me me try this on, let me try this on. Because she already doesn't even know what you look like on a day-to-day basis. Mm -hmm. She knows honeymoon Michael for three days. What you looked like in a tux at the wedding. She has not seen you in your everyday street clothes day after day to know that, oh, your pearl necklace is probably a single string pearl, pearl necklace. She does, she, Chloe does not understand that that is like the amount of Gen Z men I see wearing pearl necklaces. Michael is like, no, Michael is a grown ass 38 year old man. No, I mean, you know, Gen Z is like 25, right? Like it, they're not 12. Yeah. I know, but I'm saying 25 is grown. Is it though? Oh my gosh. What I'm saying is clearly his style is very influenced by like current culture. Mm, like yeah. m- more like uh like by younger people. And so I think like to ask to try it on that is coming on strong when she doesn't understand. And so she's just like confused. And she's trying to make sense of it in her head, which isn't going to help. The thing is, and it's so interesting that they're matched, is that Chloe is an old 38 and Michael is a young 38. Mm-hmm. Like, and we'll talk about the, the the other mismatches later, but just, just ugh. The, the fact these two are matched is so crazy to me. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, she's freaked out now about the whole jewelry thing and how much of, of his feminine side he shows. Uh, we do get to Michael's apartment. And we get to meet Mello, the dog, who gives him a bunch of loves and kisses. We also meet Franklin, his cat, I, wait, Grandma's I do other do, cat. I do do that too. The when he laid on the ground and let Mello I, just have his way, I have I go no, lay on my rug. I have no doubt that you spend probably ninety percent of your time at home just on the floor, letting the dogs crawl and sniff and lick all over you i have no <laughs> doubt that that's what happens at at casa de la wealth <laughs> on a regular basis listen i spent all day working they're so sad that i can't give them constant attention so then when it's the evenings or it's the morning before i start work they're just like we want to play you just walk you just walk in and like that uh arrested development me you just fall out <laughs> right. and then you have your way spice girls yeah, right. 
and then I'm just giggling, and then we're having a great time. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody walks by Asia's house and just hear giggling. Like, what's going on? <laughs> She's over having there? a party. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we we get to meet all of Michael's pets. We get to meet the smooshed face cats. We do find out that Chloe's dogs are staying with her cousin, uh, but she can't wait to get them into the new place. Uh, Michael shows us around. Funny how we haven't heard anything about the pet policy at this new apartment. I, I, know, I count one cat he, or two. He has two cats, Franklin Graham. He has a dog, and then she has two dogs. That's five pets. Mm-hmm. Cole, Chris, are like, um, <laughs> excuse hello. <me. laughs> guess, guess the pet policy is very lax over there in Colorado. <laughs> right. Uh, but so yes, we we get uh, the tour of Michael's house. He had a, he all, he has arcade machine himself, Mister you know, uh, Von Miller of his own right. He's like, I have a I have an arcade in my apartment too. Yeah, I need to go all the way over to wherever y'all are. I can just go home to be an arcade. Bernie's yeah. like, bro, that's so awesome. Let me come over to your place. <laughs> uh, we get into Michael's room. We see his closet. It it honestly. It's not that bad. It's not, even, it's not that bad. Like well, I, I expected less from Chloe, and I expected more from Michael. So interesting. They have almost the same size closets. Was it who was whose house was it that it was just like boxes on box? Was it Bri- Brianna and Vincent? Was it Vincent? He had like a pretty expensive closet. Maybe, or maybe Brianna maybe it was Shaq. I know Mirla did. Yeah, of course. I feel like Shaq had a big closet. Yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, th- we've seen bigger closets. Yeah, not, for sure. And not saying like, oh, he has a small closet, but the way he's talked it up yes. made it seem like, whoa, he has clothes on clothes on clothes on clothes. <laughs> when it's like he had a regular closet and then like a like the walk like a just a, like a side closet. The way that both these people have talked up their living styles and don't <laughs> and don't live up to it, it's like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> Maybe you guys are the perfect match. Y'all lie all the time, right? But when she saw his closet, she said, "Holy smokes!" Yeah, he does have an overflow closet. For just his tops. Yes. For just your tops. Okay. All right. Because um, they're, they're for his style, they're not just shirts. Yeah. Or they're not just button downs. And so then we get into sort of like a fashion show where Chloe is putting on a bunch of Michael's coats. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to give you this pink puffer. I want to see you wearing it. Well, I think we found, I think we have found some kinks of michael's <laughs> i want to see you wearing my clothes michael's almost like prince to me for some reason I, I i get prince vibes off of michael yeah i he yes i could see that i want to see what you look like wearing all of my clothes <laughs> like, <this laughs> and then she put clothes. it all over another jacket of his and he was mm-hmm. like or another coat and he's like i never would have thought to put that together <laughs> that's <laughs> so like, smart <laughs> yeah it's so fashionable <laughs> Uh, in a confessional, I think you found a new Michael impression. <laughs> maybe. Uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, in a confessional, he says <laughs> he feels she is vibing with his uh, stuff uh, as we see her wear more of his his uh, his clothes, and he says she has been so open and accepting. I said, "Oh, <laughs> you don't know what she just told us, Michael." <laughs> okay. I know. That's what I'm like. How how would he react if they stay together and then he sees all of this after after the fact of like how she really feels, which is why I was glad she was a little bit more honest during the Pastor Kyle conversation in a second. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, he has a very different impression than how yeah. she's really feeling. Either he can't read the room or she's really doing a good job faking the funk. But I felt like she was showing it on her face. Yeah. He then brings her even deeper into, <laughs> into madness where he shows her a uh, skirt that he he has worn before she says in a confessional she says she never imagined she would be married to a man with more skirts than she has and the look of bewilderment on her face is quite something and then she says he just takes it to the next level that's her i just finished my real confessional now (laughs) now i'm giving you my real thought he just takes it to the next level just wide eyed, just like, uh, what did I get myself into? It's, it's definitely a look on her face. Mm-hmm. So we we're now back at their their shared apartment now. Uh, Michael tells Chloe he feels so he feels comfortable talking to Cal, and that after they talk to him, they're going to get uh, you know he he basically 
says out loud what their itinerary is for us to, to know. Mm-hmm. He says, yeah, after we talk to... He, basically, he should have basically just turned to the camera and be like, well, basically, guys, after we talk to Cal, we're going to go right out to the retreat. So you'll see us there next episode. You're right. Stay <laughs> tuned. Yeah. <laughs> so then we get, you know, we see, we see Chloe with earrings and she's trying on earrings or something. He's like, oh, can I borrow your earrings, actually? I would love to wear those. Again, she's like, uh, what? My you want you want to wear my earrings, my woman earrings? You want you men want to wear woman jewelry? Oh. If she if she had if that she pearl, had her pearls on, she, she would have clutched, clutched them. <laughs> yeah, she would have clutched. She's like, oh, scandal! <laughs> A man wearing women's garments? <laughs> Say it ain't so. Uh, I think it's I think it's I I think you stumbled your way into what it is. I think. Fashion is just his thing. Like his what's the word? <laughs> you know the word. <laughs> we all know the word. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> his 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 zhuzh, his uh Yeah. His his thing. Let's just call it a thing. Yeah. He thing. likes fashion. He likes mm-hmm. he likes to push the boundaries of fashion. He likes to be experimental. Nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, apparently Chloe is just not Chloe is that. not the woman for that. Not the woman. She ain't yeah. the one. Um, so they welcome Cal to the apartment. You know, Cal does his thing. He glad hands everybody. He's like, oh, hey, you guys look great. Hey, you guys look great <laughs> together. Like someone matched you. Terribly, Pastor Cal. <laughs> look at you. And Cal says he's glad they got the chance to. He's glad the experts got the chance to do better. And he says that he feels like they did do better. Well, I mean, the other lady Based did on... run away. <laughs> so <laughs> I think Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it needed to really anyone would have been better whoever you could not it. have done worse <laughs> right uh, so Cal says he sees he sees maturity in them uh, Chloe says uh, she isn't sure that she, two years ago she's not sure she would have been able to marry a stranger Cal says especially not this kind of stranger and, she, <laughs> and this is when she put, this is when she points out well yeah he did actually tell me he wants to wear my jewelry Pastor Kyle's like Pastor Kyle's getting to Chloe. He's like, "What? You want you want to wear her jewelry?" He, he is also freaked out by this. Mm. Cal says, "Well, how do you feel about that?" Chloe says, "I'm not really used to it, and Michael is vastly different from any man that she's ever been with romantically, and it's new territory for her, and it's going to take some time for her to navigate it." So okay, mature, measured response, truthful. I like that. Cal says, you know, it's really interesting that the traits you talk about being feminine that are caring and nurturing, you know, they're, they're considered feminine. Mike is Mike is very unique, but, you know, I'm not married to him. And, you know, you're going to figure <laughs> out how you're how you're going to reconcile that. She says as she she takes the line right out of Dr. Pepper's book. She says, well, my normal didn't work for me before. So and, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Literally, uh, she says. Dr. Pepper's Mike, at home, like, yep, yeah, you got it. <laughs> you read my book. Right. Uh, she says, yeah, the norm didn't work out for me before, and Michael is someone uh, that she she wouldn't have picked normally, but she did ask for a man with a heart of gold, and that is what she got. And she values a man that is his authentic self. And she has always wanted that, and you know, if that comes in the form of someone that's more feminine. Then they're gonna give it their best shot. So, oh, you, you had me right up until we'll give it our best shot. Like that means I'm counting out the days now. Literally, and she even went as far to say she didn't not even just somebody I wouldn't pick for myself. If I was at a bar, I would not have approached him. I was just like, ugh. So Cal says, you know, as long as there is that mutual comfort and respect, and they can value each other for who they are, then they have a good foundation. Um, he asked them if they if their understanding and acceptance is something that will begin an emotional connection. Chloe says, well, they do have good momentum right now. Uh, Mike agrees and says, you know, they recognize the value they have in each other and they need to just cultivate it. Michael says the comfort is there. <laughs> Cal says, oh, that's exactly what I wanted to hear, Michael. Comfort is there, huh? So, uh, 
Just how comfortable are we getting? <laughs> like, we talking handhold comfort. We talking hug comfort. Are we talking about? Are we talking about the going all the way comfort, Mike? Tell me. And tell me slowly. <laughs> Kyle says, I really want you to want each other. I didn't make that up. He said that. He did say that. He said, I want you to want each other. Michael says, oh, I, I want her. <laughs> Chloe says, well, yeah, it, it does seem that he is attracted. We would be having a different conversation if he didn't want a piece of, of her. <laughs> so, what? I was like, but wait, do you want him? That's the that, she does not answer that question right. ever in this conversation. Cal says, Well, seems like y'all want each other. I want y'all to want each other, even though you're not acting on it. <laughs> Starts getting belligerent now. He's getting upset. Because now he can sense. <laughs> now he can sense that they have not had sex. Mm-hmm. You know that pisses Cal off. Mike says, you know, it's important, but what brings him satisfaction is the emotional being there. Screw the emotional, says Cal. <laughs> he didn't really say that. <laughs> it's important for the emotional to be there, and it and it will help them foster more of that emotional feeling. Uh, she says they're not there emotionally yet. Cal says, listen here. Y'all are married, and you need to give yourself permission. You aren't strangers anymore. It's literally day five. <laughs> Emily lax. and Brennan are still strangers. We're freaking lax, Cal. They are definitely still strangers. This woman just found out this man likes to wear women's clothes and women's jewelry, okay? They are definitely still strangers. Cal says, you're not strangers anymore. You should have you should have gotten this done three days ago. You're not strangers anymore. You are married. You have permission to have sex. Sometimes it doesn't click that y'all are married. You don't have to pump the brakes. Now, I brought, I brought the sex box. I know it's, I know it's a little early <laughs> for the sex box for y'all, but we are desperate. I'm gonna need y'all to take this box in the other room right now. Got some candles in there. I got some Brian McKnight in here. I got some boys and men. I'm gonna need y'all to go in there and do what married people do, and then come back out here and explain it to me slowly. <laughs> I'll be outside the room listening, but I want you to tell, I want you to explain to me in graphic detail what you guys did. I'm desperate here. Chloe, I told you when you got the second chance that you would be expected to put out week one or you would not be matched. You need to live up to your promise. I need it. I have been, it's been dry this whole season. I'm going to need you to do this for me. Okay. Let's get, do we have to get a duvet cover in here, Michael? Is that what you need? <laughs> Some more duvet action? Is that what gets your rocks off, Michael? I get it. I understand. Hell, if she won't do it, I'll do it with you, Michael. I, I just need something, okay? I can't keep coming here and no one's having sex. What am I even doing here? Okay? It's just so frazzled. Just to, takes off his glasses and breaks them in half. He's like... I just can't understand. He does his typical, like he always has his like <sighs> just disgusted. Listen, y'all, everything before the sex box did he did say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was that. <laughs> there was a blurred, like what's you didn't what's see that truth on your, on your episode? You didn't see <laughs> that? You didn't get that version? Huh. Interesting. Your version was two and a half hours. I guess we're getting two different lifetimes. I <laughs> I'm getting the uh, after dark, I guess. I'm You're getting the after time. dark with color. <laughs> yeah, I get real color, okay? <laughs> you get that, you know, off Mine color. Mine is the brand. abridged black and white version. Yeah. <laughs> but just, just for Cal to come in here and be like, listen, y'all are married. You're not strangers anymore. Just go do it. Just go go bang it out what are you waiting for come on god i really don't Uh, think cal thinks of this of any season as a success unless there's at least one couple having sex consistently has there been a season where all couples did not consummate until like through decision day 
I don't think so. I'm I think like, we've always had yeah. at least one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we had two last season, but I just, I just don't know if it's. I. What is? So, what is your guess? Is it going to happen? Is any? Are we going to get a consummation this season? I don't think so. I think Austin I mean, and Becca will eventually get there. I don't. You don't I, think so? No, I I think of anybody. It would be Michael, mm-hmm. and I because I could see I could see Michael and I could see Chloe being like, okay, maybe if we just do that, I can think of him a different way. Oh Lord, she's gonna Haley this thing, <laughs> right? It's not out of the realm of possibilities. Oh my God! You know, if if Michael and Haley were worse people, I could definitely see them being a Haley and Jake. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, because he's so eccentric and out of her norm. Mm-hmm. That's basically what Haley and Jake were. Yeah, yeah. Like he was so you know eccentric that she wasn't vibing with that at all. Right. I feel like that's almost what we're getting here. I just feel like with Haley or with Haley with Becca and Austin, I just don't see it happening. They're just they're just continuing to go downhill. I think of anybody you we know. Brennan and Emily are off. No, I'm not even. I'm not even thinking of them. <laughs> they're okay, not even a, a couple. They're not a part of this conversation at all. Like they're they're so far outside the realm of this conversation. I'm not even considering them. Yeah. Michael and Chloe and Austin and Becca are our what we're what Pastor Cal's hanging his hopes on right now. Right is what Cal is calling the production department every day. Yeah, did, did it happen yet? <laughs> Can you check again? Can you ask them again if they cost me the jet? I just like we just know. asked him in the morning. I need to know. I don't. I, like, maybe, they, maybe they did it. Maybe they did it in the morning. Maybe they did it right after they talked to you. Can you just can you just call them, please? Just call them. I them. think. Well, okay. So here's one thing on on the whole, her trying to get comfortable with his style and his him his, his expression of his femininity. On after party, Lauren said. Your style does not phase me. <laughs> She's like, because of the men that I date. And then <laughs> Rudy goes, <laughs> she just had this reaction. <laughs> I was like, but what? Here goes, I, here goes Pastor Cal just rising up out of the, the chair behind Lauren. So, hey, Lauren, Lauren, you like Michael? <laughs> Michael? What do you say? What do you say we do this right here? <laughs> I mean, you saw see, see in the click. Rudy, you wouldn't mind, right? <laughs> just watching right we're all adults here i actually you know, do think michael and lauren would be a good match i mean that's the fantasy casting that we've had all season it's like ever since onion broke lauren's heart and mystery girl x broke michael's heart it's like get get lauren and michael together obviously I mean- <laughs> duh <laughs> that's the thing i mean i do think now that we're learning more and more about michael I could see it working from the little we know about both of them. But um, on After Party, it was a little weird for Rudy to just be like, Michael, are you straight? Oh, I forgot about that. I said, what, Rudy, what are you doing? <laughs> Rudy, this is not the move. <laughs> this is not the thing. that. What are you? What, what's going on? <laughs> Going around asking people their sexual preferences. Are you, I said, Rudy, are you in these are you in these Facebook groups I'm in that constantly do this? Listen, if, if we don't do it in our Facebook group because our our people got sense, but I'm in these other Facebook groups where they're like, you know, Michael is gay. That's just it. What? They, they do the <laughs> like, same are thing you to Austin. Okay? Yeah. Who oh yeah, declar- that was the rumor. Yeah, people were rumoring that. With- who declaratively rumors. state? declaratively state that they know that Michael is gay. They 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 see it. They know. They can tell they they can tell when someone is gay. Uh, come on. And, and Rudy like you you are a girl, Rudy. Like what are you what are you doing? You doing? I was like, "What?" And then he's like, "Sure." And she's like, "So." <laughs> he's like, Wait, "Yeah." What do, you, he's, what do you say sure to? Cuz she was like, um so she was like, so do you identify? So she's like, so he, she was like, so you identify as straight? He's like, sure. Yeah, he's like, sure. He's, yeah. he, well, he does say, I am, I, I am a heterosexual man. Yeah. <laughs> totally, all my life. She's like, okay. Just check. She's like, do you, does she know? You sure? You're Are you sure? sure? <laughs> he's like, yeah, I tell her. <laughs> like, Rudy, 
Stop. Yeah, that 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 wasn't the move. No, that wasn't no, the move. But no, I mean, look sideways at you, Rudy, because you've been you you've been our girl for going on four seasons now, and don't don't start don't start slipping. <laughs> say, whoa, 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 what was that? <laughs> don't don't make us remember who raised you, Rudy. Okay, because we've been we've been we've been looking past that, but. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Start to look at you sideways now. Yeah, that that, that was, was just not odd. a good. That was not a good question to ask. At all. Not at all. But but yeah, for him to have to sit there and try to have to defend mm. that he's straight, bad, it's like bad, bad. yeah. Um. So. So yeah, that was it for them, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that was their that was their <laughs> segment. Um, they do show up to the retreat next week so we do yep. get to see that um and we do see becca crying she said it doesn't feel good to not be wa- feel wanted <laughs> and austin which i'm sure pissed you off austin's like well, Absolutely. Oh, I thought well I we were we were gonna do something tonight but i guess i guess we can't do it anymore i guess yeah I guess yeah over. right austin i was i was gonna give it to you good too and you just <laughs> mm, you just ruined the whole thing oh darn oh dang he like zips his pants up. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna you gonna had this, but you decided to ruin it. He's he's on my last nerves. I think he's <laughs> he's getting there with Brennan. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, no, I, he is... I no. In terms of just my level of annoyance, I could be annoyed with people even if they are like so, in solid Simple. relationships. Yeah. I, 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 for me, Austin is not at Brennan levels yet, or even close to. I think Brennan is such a turd. Um, <laughs> I think, I think Austin is just confused and immature, Ooh, and just does not. <laughs> Her hair grazed my leg. I thought she was asleep <laughs> over there. Who's there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's like low key fear of mine. <laughs> that you're podcasting and someone's gonna break into your yes! house while you're podcasting. I, yes! I get that. I understand that for sure. Yes, I, I for a minute I was locking this door and then I was just like, maybe I don't need to do that. But and then I was setting my alarm too. <laughs> the one time you don't, it's when the, po- <laughs> it's when the podcast band it strikes. Literally, I'm like, they're gonna know at this time. <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> I break it on podcasters. You gonna see this bright light. In this room specifically, it's go time. Listen, uh, kind of pseudo plug. I just I covered American Nightmare with Mari and Sarah on crime scene. And listen, it's not out of their own possibility for people to just randomly break into your house and, and abduct you. <laughs> oh, okay? love it. Yeah. I'm about to be on high security here on out. <laughs> now consider me scared. Oh man! Uh, but uh, let's let's rate these two uh, crazy kids. Well, last week we we're at threes. Oh, I, I feel like I I feel like when the jewelry and the skirt came out, I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not going to bring it down to a one. I'll bring it down to a two. I'll be generous and bring it to a two because I feel like as soon as those came out, she's like, er? uh, yikes. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it down to a two, two, not because of or because of Chloe. I mm-hmm. feel like she she could easily want to be as as like accepting and open minded as possible. But the reality is if you're just not used to his style and you're going to question any little thing, like, well, why is that? Well, why is why does he have this piece of clothing? Why does he have this piece of clothing? And it's not like she's questioning anything else. It's all fashion. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's going to take a minute, especially the reactions we got from her this episode. Yeah. One day at a time, one day at a time, one day at a time. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she's I felt, I felt like even from the beginning with Chloe and Michael, I always said, I just can't imagine Chloe bringing Michael to some, you know, because she's like a philanthropist <gasps> person. The part where she said, I walking in, I can't remember if you said this part, but she was like, yeah, I can just imagine us walking in somewhere and people going like, oh my gosh, oh, what's yeah. going on here? Yeah, what, exactly. Why would they say that? And it's, I don't know, it's not as if he is being that over the top. I. I don't know, and like in her like mind, said, it is though. Yeah, because it, that, it, that's her level of of where she's at with how she feels about those type of things. 
Um, and they're just way different. I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like Mr. Girl X was probably this really eccentric person that like matches Michael's style. Yeah, he needs his... somebody with tats and yeah. just is like But she flaked. So they were like <laughs> they're like, see, we cannot we can't bring these eccentric people in here because they're they're flakes. Let's bring this nice, sweet, desperate, wholesome. Older lady he, in he here. He said he wanted sweet. He wants sweet. Look at her. So sweet. Just look at how silly she is. The fake eyelash. <laughs> silly. Let's get her in here. Even though she's never dated a man with tattoos. Oh, she got the fake eyelash back on, y'all. She's never dated a man with tattoos. She's never dated a man that has this type of flair or style. Why, experts, would you do this? They. She's sweet. That was why yikes you couldn't find someone with that was eccentric and sweet like you couldn't do that you couldn't they find need to that be, person they need to be required to write a five page essay about why this woman is good for this man and then another five page essay about why that man is good for this woman because the justifications feel bare minimum mm-hmm. and then it feels that way when we see them it's like show me your receipts yes <laughs> And I, I've always said that the most, even like, especially the most recent seasons of Mavs feels like, because you used to get these segments in the beginning of seasons where you'd have all these applicants streaming into a ballroom as the experts interview them all. And we, we go through all this detailed list of people, but it just feels like they're just picking from a pool of pre-selected applicants and being like, uh, mm-hmm. I guess y'all work. Sure. Go yeah. ahead. That's almost what it feels like. Yeah, it does for sure. So uh, thank you all for sticking with us. Um, Definitely didn't think we'd get two hours and 15 minutes out of this one. But of course, we made it happen. Listen, as the show gets boring, more boring and boring, we get sillier and sillier. Okay, (laughs) Literally. Just what happens. Literally. Catch up on our lives and then a dash of the episode. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so yes, that was episode 16. Next week we'll be talking about episode 17. Um, make sure you go subscribe to the Love at First Sight feed. Next week, it's Love is Blind. Jason and Mary are gonna give us some amazing coverage. I cannot wait. And uh Jason, what are you up to? Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on the Twitter. Yes, I still call it Twitter. I refuse to call it by that other letter. Uh, you can find me there at J A Y R1085. Um, as far as podcasting, uh, like Asia said, I got Love is Blind coming up. Other than that, pretty quiet right now. Awesome, awesome. Well, y'all can follow me at Asia Likes Asia Like Asia on all social media. I did get back into my TikTok, figured it out. So my personal TikTok, I'm good to go, but I'm always on Mall Shipu Sisters. That's the perfectly curated uh for you page. Um, but yeah, give me a follow. You can always see my fun with the uh, the Spice Girls on my stories. I keep I keep it lively. Lately, cinnamons for the people that hate the dog talk. I, it's been on ten today. I do realize that. <laughs> but cinnamons' latest thing is <laughs> it would be okay if you didn't talk about dogs, the non dog people, Asia. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cinnamons' latest thing is so I have an air purifier in my room. Of course you. <laughs> I no one shocked even, by that. Oh my! I didn't even think about that before. I just said that. Oh my god! Okay. Anyway, her latest thing is to turn it off in the morning. So she just leans her little nose over and presses the button, and it, it turns off. And I'm like, "Girl, that's not your job." I literally have four videos of her doing it. <laughs> Take it upon myself. <laughs> she just said, well, this thing's so noisy. <laughs> It's just this boop. It's like the perfect height. Where Pure she, air. What kind of nonsense is this? <laughs> kind of bougie crap. Get this out of here. It makes a difference too. Like I wake up less like or not even congested at all. It's great. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh my gosh. We're supposed so there's to be no placebo us. effect going on at all. <laughs> no. If I went in there, if I came, brought you the filter to show you, it is filtering lots of dust. Mm-hmm. The filter is filtering. Oh, my. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, we'll see y'all next week to talk about episode 17. Hope y'all have a great Valentine's Day since that'll be before we see y'all again. 
<laughs> but, Will you talk about Love is Blind on your TikTok or Twitter? Can, where can the masses go to see your <laughs> thoughts on Love is Blind now? You've OP, been giving it to them for, four, for five seasons. You can't just <laughs> leave them in the lurch. It's for, for one, there are so many episodes next week. So... Will you text me your thoughts and I can relate okay, them there we the go. podcast? Yeah, maybe I'll text you my thoughts. But if that's if I can watch them in time before you record. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. Yeah. Um, so, She's yes. too busy for y'all. <laughs> can't give you more content. So busy. Uh, so anyway, we'll see y'all next week. Thanks for sticking with us. Bye.